Yep. How was your poop? Man, it was rough, man. It was rough. I had uh, a... <laughs> what's up? What's up, Sid? What's up, baby? <laughs> no, Kenny, you uh, told I, me, man. <laughs> I, uh, I fucking had a... I mean, I had a, a few cheat meals yesterday, but I think the one that did it, I'm cool with sandwiches, stuff like that. But uh, I have Popeyes, bro. I haven't had that in uh, I don't know how long. I haven't had Popeyes in I don't know, maybe maybe a year, maybe more. Like in the last five years, I probably had it like twice. Wait, Popeyes so chicken, right? Yeah, Papa Chicken. <laughs> uh, you should be able to handle that. Come on. I, I I would hope so. I would hope so. But you know what it is? It is because I'm a, a Ghanaian, right? So so we grew up on more home food, even though I, I did eat a, a lot of Popeye at, at one point. <laughs> but are you I, are you actually like culturally like Ghanaian or are you just like from the Bronx? See, <laughs> that, that's the tough part because like my, my, I guess my parents didn't like. I don't know. They didn't put me onto a bunch of Ghanaian stuff. It was just kind of like my dad listened to like I don't know, like Michael Jackson and shit like that. So it wasn't like I grew up on a bunch of cultural stuff. Michael Jackson, wait, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Like, wait. Yeah, he, yeah. He, well, well, he listened. He, he listened to uh, Bob Marley. I don't. It was just like random. He, I mean, his his taste was just like you know. Like broad, and then my mom didn't really watch TV or listen to music at all. But did they so, like cook cook like cultural they jollof did. rice? They did, yeah. They jollof did. rice, they, man. They made some bomb, <laughs> some bomb jollof rice. That's a that's a whole another debate that me and Ken can can get into. Yeah, much, but, yeah. We you get, know, we Niger get it. <laughs> Nigerian jollof versus Ghanaian jollof. <laughs> But we, we, we gonna save that for a different day. We gotta get Sulios in here. <laughs> Bro, it's S funny. Sulios, Bonac, get all of them. Let's just get everybody. Yeah, get, you know? get everybody. Just make a make a big ass debate. Yeah, no, but yeah, I, I get. I guess like, I guess culturally, man. Besides the language, I, I do speak one of the languages. But I mean, to say speak is you know like at this point like fifty percent. You know what I'm saying? So. That that's a tough one, you know. So you know, in in their standards, like when I go there, they're like, "Oh, this dude is just he's just American at this point," you know what I'm saying? Whereas, yeah. I don't know. Uh, how about you, Ken? Are, are you like like culturally like 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 uh like so, in touch all the way in touch? So I, I won't say all the way in touch, but like um our language. So we're Eastern Eastern Nigerian, so Igbo. So I understand. I understand yeah. the language, but I can't speak because, you know, my mom and dad would speak it to us, you know, when we were we were growing up. But in terms of like actual culture and like, you know, things that are going on back home, like, you know, like Silios will send me some stuff sometimes and I'm like, bro, I haven't had that before, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but food wise, food wise, yeah. the same as you, you know, growing up, I, I ate, you know, my parents... Uh, African culture, like they don't want no fast food, nothing. So I, I didn't eat yeah. any, I didn't really eat a lot of fast food growing up at all. You know, it was strictly just at home meals and we had some Nigerian meals, you know, but it was strictly just no fast food, no McDonald's, none of that. So yeah. I'm just like you on that. That, that, that didn't happen until maybe like, uh, like late in high school, maybe, you know, when you yeah. start eating like more junk food. How about, uh, how about you, Sid? What's your, oh uh, man. I'm Indian, and so my mom, I, I actually was born there, and we all came over when I was 10 years old, and so my mom did the whole Indian food at home, but it was weird, because I remember she would send me to school with, like, rice cakes, rice cakes and, like, chicken breast, yeah, <laughs> when yeah. I was a little kid, and, and like, we'd have steamed broccoli at home, so it was a, a weird mixture, but it was no, when we got, when we have fast food, it'd be, like, once a week, maybe, you know, and it'd be, it would be a big deal, a real big deal that we'd have that. yeah. Sid's been bodybuilding before he even started bodybuilding. <laughs> <Before you're tired. laughs> Built for this. <laughs> yo, yo, Sid, are you are you aware, Sid, that uh, a lot of a lot of West African cultures grow up watching like they watch like Bollywood movies? You know, you know about that, right? Yeah, Suleiman always tells me, man. He'll he'll be talking about Bollywood stuff, and I don't know either. I'm like Kennedy. He tells me yeah. something. I'm like, all right, I believe you. <laughs> it, it's it's like it, it's super random but for, for whatever reason Bollywood is really big in West Africa so like my mom used to watch all the Bollywood movies and stuff and we used to watch it too so 
like like I, I, I would have like Indian friends in like elementary school, and, and we always talking about the new movies and stuff. Everybody be like, "What the hell y'all talking about?" Like, we're not gonna get it. No, don't worry about it. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those cultural things that's 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 just super random. What's, what's good, Paul? What's going on, man? So, how's that? Uh, uh, how's that shoulder going, Paul? It's still fucked up, bro. No, I probably need a little week off. Happy yeah. belated, by the way. Happy belated thank birthday, you. bro. Appreciate sure, it, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy, happy belated, man. Yeah, but I don't know if, if, if y'all saw Paul's story, but he was uh, he was arm wrestling. At, I'm not sure where he was arm wrestling. Yeah. Uh, What's the story? Was arm wrestling. Some dude, some some dude kept my arm wrestling. I kept saying no, 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 no. Fuck. Mm. Finally, I thought oh, I fucking let's go. Whooped his ass the first time. He wanted to go again the second time. Right before he was going to start, he brought me down. I was bringing him back up, and something popped in between my like the my bicep and my my bicep and my my doubt. See, but here's the thing: I feel like we know not to do it, but like we're we're trying to not be like like a dick neither, right? So sometimes they keep saying it, and you're like, okay, it's not going to be that big of a deal. But what it is like, we we don't go hard, but they always want to like you know show them like the big guy. Let me arm wrestle the big guy. Yeah, so, yeah. You it's know, just here's the annoying thing too. Like if Paul was like, oh, I don't want to do this. Like fuck this, right? They'll just be like, oh, this guy's an asshole, you know. And that's <laughs> just the story at the end of the day. But it's like, exactly, man. That 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 annoys me, man. That that annoys me. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the dude, the dude came and sat in front of me and put his hand, his hand out, right? And I shook his hand, you know, whatever. I knew what he was trying to do. He was just sitting in front of me, so let's go, well, let's go, let's go. I'm not, bro. Like, I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like, no. If I'm nah. right, fuck, let me just shut the fuck up, whoop his ass, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoop his ass that... the first time, and then went again the second time. And I, the first time I, when I was doing it, I felt my, uh, like the, like the fibers pull, like the mm -hmm. stretching. So the second, fuck, man. The second time, I just, it, it just popped, right? You be go by, you know what I mean? Like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah that, um, some similar happened to me in, in Mexico, right? I was at like it was like a restaurant, and then one of the waiters wanted to arm wrestle. But same thing, I'm like, oh nah, I mean we could just pose or whatever for the because the, one of the guys had to had the phone. Um, but then yeah, but then you, you got a group of people, they're all like looking at you, so it's like you don't want to shut them all down and, and and seem like maybe come off rude or like like a dick, like Ken said. So like okay, but let's just take a picture. You're like yeah, no, no problem, just like a a quick video. So I'm thinking we're just gonna like hold hands for the picture or maybe like do like a fake kind of thing. And then he just goes boom hard. <laughs> I was so pissed, bro. I was, because I mean, your reflex is gonna tighten up automatically. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, that's an easy injury. So I, I was so pissed, but I, I mean, I, I, I kept my cool. I, I wasn't gonna go crazy at the restaurant. That's, but that's exactly what happened to Victor Martinez, right? It um, is. It is what happened overseas to too. Exactly the yeah. same thing. It's crazy, you know. You know, I mean, they always they always want to do that shit in Mexico. I've been on a few cruises <laughs> where you get off, you know. I mean, all of a sudden, the big guy like, "Oh yeah, this arm wrestle, arm wrestle, you got money." You know what I mean? Like, I'll, 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 I'll. Yeah. Let, let, let me ask you guys: When you guys went to Mexico, because I, I went last time after nationals for vacation. <laughs> did did it? Were they? Did they think you guys were like some kind of celebrity? Because they thought I was some kind of like celebrity yeah, yeah. from here or something, right? <laughs> I think, I, I think any time you're like buff. And you yeah. go to like a different country. I think everybody assumes you have to be either like famous or important yeah. or like some kind of athlete. Yeah, like that that happened in happened in Puerto Rico. That, honestly, that, that that probably happens like almost anywhere you go. Like to, yeah. to be honest, I mean, I mean, even here, even in LA, if I go to like a restaurant or something, and, I, and I'm dressed nice, I got a nice chain on. People assume like I, I must be like some NFL player or some kind of you know wrestler. Or, well, you know, you got you got a chain on. Think. That's why you know you got a chain <laughs> on. <laughs> People, big buff black guy, gotta be an yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they they automatically think you're like important. I'm like, ah, you're booked for cheap. Are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> man, it, it's crazy how that goes. But how's the? Uh, did you train? Uh, did you get back to training, Paul? Nah. Um, it's fucked up. I did legs on Friday. I'll probably take another week off and just double double up on legs next week. And, you're about uh, continue, to continue getting work done on it yesterday, you know? You're about to start start prep soon? Well, yeah, it's 20 weeks out. I don't know, I don't know how okay. I was going to mess that up. Yeah, yeah but I mean, yeah. I, that should be honestly, right. yeah, you, you got so much size, especially like in your shoulders, that 
I don't think it's going anywhere. I mean, it's not going to feel – it doesn't feel good to to, to not train 100%. But, you know, your shoulder is being injured. You not training shoulders is not going to really change your shoulders. I don't think so. Well, Hopefully not. Mentally, mentally, I'm telling myself, you know what? The, the two weeks off might be might do better. Might do be better than the bad, you know what I mean? I can't tell you yeah, that. Yeah. I took any, any time off, really, you know? So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep that, that positive mindset, so – Man, I want to get back on the gear, yeah. bro. Start pushing it. I'll, 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 I'll blow back up. So I mean, it's not, yeah. It's not and and deal, Paul, bro. and Paul, this is your perfect excuse to be an asshole from now on. When someone asks you that question, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, you know? bro. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you fucking know better too. You know, no, yeah, you know yeah, better. yeah. You yeah. Take your fucking ass, bro. I'm like, fuck. It's so, it's so, it, bro. It's always a little bit hard in the moment, or even let's say, like. You go into the gym and you're limited on time. You're like, okay, I gotta leave at this time. Go eat whatever the case is, and then people talking to you, right? You you're you're standing there and you're like, bro, this I've been talking for ten minutes. I gotta cut this short, but it's like you feel like bad. You don't want to actually do it, so you stand there and talk for ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Then the next person comes. You sit down for fifteen minutes, and the next thing you know, you're you're in the gym for an extra hour. That oh. that shit takes so much time out of your day, but in prep. And prep when when you're deep enough in prep, you have no filter. Like literally, I, I'll sit there and be like, "I'm sorry, I, I got to hit my set." You know what I'm saying? You, you just can't. You have sometimes I, I don't even respond. It's not even purposely. It's like your brain is different in prep. You're just a complete different animal, bro. You just you're not even there, bro. I don't. I, I don't bad, like. Yeah. I had yeah. a bad inc- I had a bad incident with prep. Like, um, yeah, Sid, Sid, Sid knows they were they, <laughs> they were to- they were torturing me on that stairmaster. So, <laughs> so <laughs> one day I I um I would do it in the mornings, and um I went on a stairmaster one day. Like when I usually I would go at six a.m. every single time, and there's like seven stairmasters in in, in that twenty four gym, mm-hmm. and this lady decided to come right next to me. There's seven stairmasters. Everything's open. Mm-hmm. She picks the one exactly right next to me, and usually it's not a big deal, right? Oh, person's there. Maybe you say hi or whatnot. But dude, that day I just fucking lost it, dude. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, are you fucking serious? There's seven other stairmasters, and you pick the one right beside me. What the fuck is your problem? Yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. well, you're in prep at that moment, you know. I was like, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like on a woman. You know? Dude, on a woman, was... a woman? Oh, bro! <laughs> no. I saw, I saw her like three, three, three weeks later. I apologized to her, I, and we're oh, cool now. But yeah, 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 we're cool now. But it was like, man, in the moment, I was just like, man. Sometimes prep will get to you to a point that you're just like, you're a different person, you know. If if, if yeah, if, if I'm able to catch myself, uh, I'll definitely go back and apologize. But in the moment, sometimes it's um. Me and my training partner, we're training legs, right? And it's funny because we're training. We haven't said one word to each other. Like, he walked in, did his warm-ups. We haven't even made eye contact. And we go into the squat rack, we're squatting, and then he's sitting like this. So me and him are both, we're both prepping, but he's deeper in the prep. I think he was, like, maybe four weeks out. And he's sitting now, and this guy was like, yo, bro, your legs look amazing, bro. Good shit. I see you getting shredded. And my training partner like this. He didn't even look at him. He's like this, just looking straight ahead. And the guy walked away. <laughs> And then none of us said anything. And later on, we finally start talking a little bit. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, you're getting a good pump. Good. And then he walked up to the guy. He's like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I, I, I was just in the zone. It's not personal. I'm not trying to be a dick. And the guy was like, oh, no problem. But every time the guy says, sees him now, he doesn't say anything to him. So the, the, the guy was the, the guy was still hurt. <laughs> the guy was still. I mean, I, I get both sides. Like, right? I can see how you, you could feel some kind of way. Somebody just completely ignored you. But bro, in that moment, he just finished the squat. He he just doesn't have it in him, bro. He he can't he can't waste that energy at that point. Yeah. It's just you got you gotta get that lean. And he was shredded by the time. You gotta get that lean to understand that, bro, it's a different beast. You you're not okay. <laughs> you're not okay. You're not you. You you're fucked up, bro. You're fucked up. But uh So while 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 we're on that topic, because we, we do have a guest here and I, I wanna give him proper introduction because this is someone that's this this close to me so Mm -hmm. you know paul paul is is kind of joe's big brother right we all know that in bodybuilding and the guy we have on today uh is kind of my bodybuilding big brother you know uh sid rye so you know you guys you guys most people kind of know me from north americans but um sid really sid is the one that kind of really really refined me as a bodybuilder him and andrew and 
you know, I just want to publicly say it on this on this podcast here that, you know, this guy is the reason why the Colossus is here today. So, <laughs> what, <laughs> so when did you guys meet? Nationals. So after he whooped my ass. <laughs> Were you only met him last year at Nationals? Yeah, yeah dude. 2022, yeah. This one right here? The this Nationals? Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, this Nationals. nationals. Yeah. Oh, he was shredded. Yeah. yeah. He was shredded. And, uh, yeah. you know, I um, I needed to, I knew that at the current place I was, it wasn't going to work out. You know, I, I, it just wasn't good. I needed to level up. And uh, Suleo's kind of put me in contact with Sid. And, you know, usually, you know how it is in, in this industry. Some people, you know, they may not want to help you. You know, they, they're kind of your friends. But Sid was just right in. You know, he's like, dude, you've got it. Let me talk to Andrew. So Sid was actually the one who put me in contact with Andrew. And, you know, throughout mm. the whole entire prep, Sid was the one that did my posing. Every single week, we would meet up on Sunday. And this guy would grill me with posing <laughs> for an hour straight. So, you know, so he's... He's family to me at this point and when it comes to bodybuilding. So I just want to give you your flowers publicly, bro. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Now we yeah. do that, we can transition into the good part of having Sid here. <laughs> Sid, what did you feel about nationals this year? Oh, man. <laughs> I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. Well, uh -oh. I look a little bit different now, right? But uh, I was going to do nationals 2023. <laughs> but I ran into some health issues, right, in May. And so these random health issues didn't end up actually being that bad. But I decided to try to get life insurance at that time because I have a two-year-old kid. It's like, you know, if I do happen to kick the bucket, I need something so it doesn't end up, you know, destitute on the street <laughs> with his pops so, dead. A smart so, man, yeah. Yeah, so I, I was getting the life insurance, and the issue was that my blood work was a little off. My, my creatine kinase was way, way elevated, like 8,000. And so all my, my PCP kept referring me to different specialists trying to find out why my, my CK was so high. But uh, the reason it was so high is because I was losing all this muscle from not training, not eating, not using any supplements. But I just yeah. had to keep going to these different specialists for like six months until they finally said, there's nothing wrong with you. Like you're clear for life insurance purposes. So life insurance though, they just said, Nah, that's not good enough for you, for us. So six months later, they declined me. Said, "Give us another six months." And so by that time, you know, I was down like one ninety eight from two fifty, and uh, nationals is just not going to happen. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is, right? Wait, wait, were you were you able to get life insurance or, or still not? no? No, they declined. They declined me for another six months. Oh. Yeah, I was just <laughs> uh, I was just about to say like. If you're able to get life insurance as a bodybuilder, I don't know how you finagled it because nobody I know can get it. Like they, you know, like bro, if your CK levels are even, listen, let's be real. Most bodybuilders, we're training five, six days a week, really hard, right? We're eating all this protein, you know, saying our CK levels are usually off the fucking charts, bro. They're gonna be like, "Yo, are you injured? Have you had a heart attack?" Like they, they don't know what the fuck is going on. But if you test everybody, it's all pretty high, you know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be it's gonna be rough to do to do it. I mean, imagine having to go to your cardiologist and going to it. Depending where you're at, it's gonna be it's not gonna be a life insurance, you know, acceptable standards, you know. Yeah, they sent me to everybody, man. And I had the good the good news was I got everything done, heart MRI, echo, and it's all perfect. So, you know, that's kind of like a, a licensed uh, bodybuild like I'm Stu. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and just push, <laughs> and push the limits but uh you know it's 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 a good rest it's like six months eight months of like you know taking it completely off the lifestyle because i you know i had to but uh now i'm ready to get back to it but what Stu was wanting me to say is at nationals, I would have whooped that ass <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i think we all know like the first place winner when i when when Kennedy and I competed against him, he got ninth. I like I I beat him multiple shows in a row. It's like that guy is me, but worse. And so, <laughs> no, no disrespect, but all the disrespect when I say that. Like I, I would I would have had that class. Trevor though, Trevor's very good, and I think Trevor would have beat me. But heavyweights, I'd have won that no problem. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, do Do you agree with the placing? So, okay, you not being there, do you agree with uh, uh, how everything else went as far as, as far overall as the and class, oh, overall? Uh, I mean, everything the the weight class yeah. and overall. Yeah, okay, I think. Yeah. I mean, the heavies was good. The heavies actually was pretty decent as far as like the fourth place guy is real good. Salby Salang, he's gonna be a, a future pro and a good pro. I thought, you know, I know you guys thought that Justin should have won the supers or should have won the overall, but I thought Trevor was the was the the proper choice, given you know more complete mm -hmm. top to bottom, front to back. That's yeah, what I said. That's that. Uh, uh, we, when Trevor when, when Trevor was on here, I, I did agree with that. But when Wyatt was on, I told him he should have won, even though I didn't think he should have won. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomat. Yeah. Originally, originally, I thought I thought Wyatt should have won originally, but after the Gilco video started coming out, um, and I saw, you know, um, I, I picked Trevor because overall he just had the better polish. But non-standing without that, I would have said that it would it should have been Justin, but Nobody yeah. would anybody have been upset if Justin won. I, I wouldn't have been upset if he won, though. You know, Be, because it's like it's kind of like apples and oranges, right? The way the judging has been going all year long, I expected Trevor to win because I'm like, well, they kind of been going. I, I hate to say going more because I mean, you, you still have to bring the goods, right? You still have to be in shape and you have to have enough size, but everything else being somewhat close. They seem to be going more structure, right? More structure than size and condition. Because same way, like Nick uh, Sampson beat Nick, and you know the whole Andrew beat uh, uh, Hunter, you know that, that that kind of thing, right? Or or even Keon beating Sean Clarita. It, it kind of been the way it's been going. So when I saw that, I was like, I think Trevor's gonna get it, even though Justin is huge and shredded. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm sure if you're Justin you're going to feel like you should have won because anytime you're the biggest, hardest guy, you're going to be like, of course I won. If you're standing there and you're like, I'm definitely the biggest, hardest guy on stage, you're not going to think you're you're going to lose, you know? But then when you look at it from my other lens, like, okay, what what else are we looking at here? And I know Tyler likes more of the um, the shapely, shapelier guys, you know, so. It's the they want you, yeah, they want you shredded enough, but you don't have to be the most shredded, you know? So that's exactly. why Trevor over, over Justin. Well, yeah, same way, uh, you know who said that, uh, Milos, right? Milos is like, well, how come Munster didn't win any shows, right? Or how come um, uh, Roman, well, Roman did win a show, but how come Roman isn't beating most of these guys? Because it's not just a condition contest, it's an everything contest. You have to be, you have to have everything. You got to be shredded, but being, if everybody's shredded, being a little bit more shredded doesn't necessarily put you over the top unless maybe you have everything else, right? If Samson comes in more shredded, that might take him over the top. But Heidi, Heidi was coming in more shredded than he is now, and he was getting fourth. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's the you know. Well, speaking of Heidi, actually, well, right I've been back fourth again. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> he about to go back back down. <laughs> but speaking of Heidi, did then he um uh, was like an update or something? Let me see. He's been pretty active lately. Yeah, because uh, he he's trying to get uh, he's trying to get that win. He wants to get on get on the good side at this point. Let's see. But the, okay, I mean it, it's just more of Hardy, right? I think we all know how Hardy looks. He looks he he, he looks shredded. Dude. He looks wide. Look at his look at his kid behind him. Like look at the <laughs> eyebrows. Oh yeah, he got these the strong <laughs> jeans, man. Holy <laughs> shit. Would you would you trim it if you had a unibrow? Would you like trim the middle? Oh, no, dude. You, you gonna <laughs> rock it? It's part of his signature. I mean, just yeah. rock it. You know, it's part of his signature at this point. Once, once you made it in like AD or right, Anthony Davis, once you've already made it, like if you were gonna shave it, you would have shaved it when you weren't like a big deal. But once you're a big yeah. deal, nobody cares. You know what I'm saying? Like you think girls are being like, oh, your unibrow is nasty. You're fucking hottie. You know, nobody nobody's yeah. judging you, right? <laughs> Do do you do you Listen, guys think huh? There's a ten foot statue. There's a ten foot statue in in Iran of this guy. He could do whatever the hell he yeah. wants. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who whose update you think is more impressive? That that I just showed you, or oh. you guys already know where I'm going next. Sam Silik <laughs> 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 That or I thought uh, you were gonna pull up that Derek most muscular they posted the other day. That was oh yeah. Oh yeah, but, but he, I guess he's not doing Arnold. But let me see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But let me look at Derek though, because I, I didn't actually take a look at that yet. Let's see. He had 1.2 million followers already. That, that was quick. All right. Yeah, that that, that looks that looks pretty good, man. Yeah, is this recent? Good. I can't I can't ever tell, you know. Is this actually a recent shot? Like is, is has anyone been able to confirm that's, that? That's the, the, a good point. I, I saw uh -huh. it posted on buys and tries since 2024, but it might not be because I haven't seen them training together recently, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the the only way to the only way to tell you is by the YouTube. They usually take like a week or a couple of days. So if if like let's say on Monday, if Derek posts a video where uh, where uh Hani at this gym, then we know it's recent. But if he doesn't, then it's probably not recent, you know. Um judging by the conditioning. You would assume maybe it wasn't recent, but but Derek stays pretty pretty lean and obviously yeah. like some yeah. sometimes like surprisingly lean. Yeah, he was know? like still in great shape at the Arnold last year when those pictures came out of him. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was. Yeah, yeah. front Th double why, the jeans. Yeah, that's why everybody always thinks he's gonna like jump in the show, but. Uh, he just likes to eat clean food, he says. And I mean, he doesn't have cheat meals really, so he just stays that way. Okay, all right. So, yeah, what, what's more impressive to you the Hadi update, the Derek update, or the Samson update? You gotta wait till he turns around, I guess. I think his back came up quite a bit, not his lats, though. Uh, I don't think his lats came up much, I think mostly like his mid back. I've got a question for for you guys after this. I mean, do you guys feel like with the with the when you know bodybuilders kind of post recent updates like all the time, or they compete pretty frequently? Do you feel like you get desensitized to the physique? Like oh, yeah. I feel like you know what I mean. Like I, I remember when I first saw, and I always bring him up. I'm sorry, guys, but Andrew Jacked, right when I first saw in Texas. And I was bamboozled. I was like, how could a guy look like this? This is insane. But you see him over time and time and time again. And you're just like, oh, you know, he needs to bring up this, 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 this. Yeah. And I feel like that's how I'm starting to feel about like Samson, for example, because I, I see him all the time. Um, I don't get that effect, that 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 first view effect anymore, where you're kind of bamboozled by the size and symmetry. Now you're just looking for the holes, right? So do you guys feel like posting a lot your physique all the time do you feel like that hurts you in the long run for your competitive prowess or you think that it just helps you actually ken's been a pro for like five months he's already jaded like, <laughs> i've seen this I've seen all this shit already <laughs> yeah, you yeah it's like point, when yeah. like when hunter would post back in like the protein shake and rice crispy days he would post yeah. every single week his his diet and his physique uh -huh. And it was just, it got to be looking at the same thing, right? It, it looks, and now he posts every so often, every couple of months or so, and mm -hmm. like something new, and it looks, it looks everybody's really wild, right? Like, I get what Ken's saying for sure. I think, yeah, I think anytime you oversaturate something, it could, it could eventually have a negative effect, right? Um, th like Denzel, he's like, he's never going to do a TV show. Why? You think you're too good for TV shows? He's like, no, because if I show them, if I show them myself too often, they're gonna get used to me or tired of me eventually, right? So I, I think there's a balance. Uh, I think nowadays you do have to post regularly, but like as far as physique updates, listen, how much are you gonna change? Like, you know, in one week, you know, unless you're like a couple weeks out. I think in prep, I think more, more off the. If you're somebody like in prep, maybe like 12 weeks out, you can post like every other week from then because you're probably going to change, you know, and uh, keeping people up to date in prep, even with your diet and stuff like that. I think it, it can really help grow, you know, your demographic like Derek Lunch for uh, uh, YouTube. It blew up because he's posting he's posting workouts every day, but he's not doing a full physique, you know, like, you know, uh, every single pose in, in posing trunks every single time he works out. He might he might show like uh, he might take his shirt off once a month, you know, but yeah. he's doing like, you know, in the tank top, maybe hitting some poses and it looks insane. But when you do like Samson has been doing like a full full physique update with the with the ass cheeks out, you know, every week. 
I think I, I, <laughs> I think you you start getting a little a little bit desensitized because he looks insane, right? But we've if you see it every single week, maybe you say, okay, he kind of looks like he looked last week, right? So yeah, but I think Ken had the point. Whereas when you would see Phil, you wouldn't see Phil not once. And then you see him and you're like, what the fuck? You know, granted, this is not that time. You do have to post more often, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a full blown physique update. Save a little, you know, save a little, for, you know, for us to desire and be like, whoa, he bought his back up so much, you know? I think there's yeah. actually yeah. something to be said for like timing this stuff properly now. So, like, don't overdo it, like you were saying. But, like, if you put up a picture of yourself that looks crazy, even if it's just like one pose at like two or three weeks mm -hmm. out, then all the talking heads start, you know, tossing it around and talking about it, like going into the show. Like, you know, even if the rest of your poses suck, which is often the case with some guys, you know, it's like yeah. everyone starts talking about you. You're like, oh, is he going to get his, his, his guy? You know, it's yeah. weird how it works. You know, it's funny. I remember when like, uh, let's say Brandon Curry would post, but let's say he doesn't post his legs, right? And people are like, well, what if he's not posting it? Because it's so good, and I'm like, that's never happened before. Nobody ever, <laughs> nobody's ever hit their best body part. You know, like you're gonna show it. You know, if something's good, you're gonna show it. So if you if you see somebody's page and you never see a pose on their back, why why aren't they showing their back? Because their back is so fucking great that that, that, that they don't want to show it. Probably not. You know what I'm saying? Probably not. You know. Samson is not scared to show shit though, which is commendable. Okay, so Nick posted the update. Okay, so funny enough, there's no back shots in here, and <laughs> that's his best shots. That is right. Oh no, but but he does have he does have the hamstring injury, so uh, maybe yeah. um. I wonder, wonder if that's still inflamed. I maybe he like, it. I mean, I I read I read somewhere I think it still is. They said they said he was still working on it or something like that. So trying to still trying to get it better. So I think it's still fucked up. I'm sure to us watching is gonna look completely fine. Right, like we're not gonna notice it, I'm sure, because he did the guest posing. But like you know, in your own head, he's probably like, oh, it, it don't got that same pop to it in his head. But visually, it probably looks pretty similar, you know. So uh, people are speculating that Nick might jump into the Arnold. Do you think that's even a possibility that he would jump into the Arnold? I mean, I feel like they wouldn't tell him no if he asked. Yeah. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Um, I, think, I, you know? I think like. I, I, I don't know Nick Walker personally, so I'm, I'm just saying this is a fan. But because of the way he lost, which was controversial last year, I feel like he wouldn't want to do it, right? It's it's almost like that, uh, the Kai Green and the Olympia thing, where they say they won't give you the Olympia. It's kind of like, well, I was good enough to win, and, and it was just apples and oranges, and they picked Samson. Um, either where, wherever you stand and whoever won that, that show, regardless... It's kind of like it's almost like it was it was kind of a uh you know it was like a nod to Samson. This is the kind of physique we want. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know because I think Nick's Nick can go into any show during the year mm -hmm. and he can win any show, including the Arnold. It's just if I were if I were in his shoes with the way it happened, I would just have a bad taste, me personally. So mm -hmm. I don't know if he'll actually do it based on my perspective if I was in his shoes. If being um, be, be devil's advocate, I would I would go the other way too. Though I would say, mm -hmm. being that that did happen to him, he'd want to go and do that show and try to whoop his ass because his confidence level was high as hell. He thinks he can yeah. beat anyone anytime. You know what I mean? So he goes yeah, in there yeah, thinking, yeah. "Fuck, I'm gonna I'm gonna whoop his ass this time and get what, what's rightfully mine." So why not? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Paul, we change it now. You gotta say devil's uh, advocate. <laughs> advocate. <yeah. laughs> Shoulder width. <laughs> Shoulder width, yeah. <laughs> so what I, what I was thinking was this, right? I guess similar to what Ken said. If he went against Samson at 100%, <clears throat> arguably his best look, you know, you could argue maybe he was a little flat. I just thought he was more shredded, not necessarily flat, you know. And he, and he lost to Samson at one of his best all-time looks, right? And then Samson has made improvements, and then you also have now Hadi in the show. And then Nick is coming off an of injury. So to go from 100% and get second, arguable second, but second nonetheless, right? 
And then now you're at a disadvantage because you just had an injury. Even if it looks fine, you not being able to train 100%, you're probably not going to be 100%. Can he even do like the Stairmaster 100%? We don't know that. So would he do would he do the Arnold knowing he's not 100%? Knowing he has Samson, which is going to be 120%. Knowing there's Hadi, which is going to be 100%, right? Is Would that be a smart move? Like, why would you do the show potentially being, you know, putting yourself in a, in a potential to get third? You being Nick Walker that everybody knows has the tools to not only be the Arnold champion, but possibly Mr. Olympia. It doesn't seem like a, the, like the best gamble, right? You know, all, all things considered. If he was healthy, perfectly healthy, <laughs> fuck it, why not? You know? Let's just put it, let's just put it like that, no? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I like, similar to Derek, I just think Nick is lean because Nick Nick is a bodybuilder. Like, he's a bodybuilder, bodybuilder. I don't think he's lean because he's trying to gauge it and be like, okay, let me jump in. I think he's just fucking lean because he was lean and he's just slowly increasing his food. He's it's not trying to... Like eight nine weeks since the Olympia, right? It was yeah, the yeah. beginning of November. That's not yeah. like, like I'm not yeah, fat man. after a rebound like that, you know, out of a show. People so, are like because people are like comparing him to themselves. Like most people are fat eight days after the show, right? So they're, <laughs> they're, so they're like eight weeks. Oh, he's still he's still so lean. Yeah, Nick is Nick is always lean. I mean, even even when he was like two ninety, he still had like you know lines. Like he was still relatively lean. You know, so I don't think there's, you know, now that being said, he's nine weeks out or eight weeks out. What are, what are we now? Seven and a half. Yeah. Seven and a half. I don't know. You know, he said him and Matt haven't discussed any shows, but now let's say if he's five weeks out and he's still really lean and everything is firing and Matt is like, holy shit, I think you can make the Arnolds and I think you can win. If Matt there's, tells him, there's, there's huh? too much stuff that kind of needs to be in play and rolling already by yeah. five weeks out chemically. Like even even if you're lean, you know, like yeah, good point. To, in order to like bring a really good look, and he's not just going to shock and jump into the Arnold like that. Yeah. I I asked him what he was doing, and he, you know what he told me? He was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm going to start in New York." He's like, "I'll probably just do whatever the fuck you're doing." <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> I don't think he's doing New York, but I don't know. He's won it before. Uh, it's, 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 it's <laughs> That's hilarious. He, he, he's being sarcastic. He, he's, he's fucking around with you. That's funny, though. But let me... Uh, yeah, and, and like when you get that lean, too, the, the hamstring is not fully recovered. So when you start really getting lean like that, you know, you're actually putting it at more risk. So I don't think he's yeah. going to jump in. It's, it's way too early. You know, it's still way too early. Yeah, I think what he if put we... up a, a leg training YouTube video recently, right? Like, I, yeah. I didn't watch it. I don't think he... I don't know if he was, like, going full bore on it, but, like, his hamstrings oh, are right. insane already. You know, like, uh, he said in one of his posts, like, you know, I haven't trained in a while, but, like, the hamstrings are already good, so I'm not too worried about it. Like, yeah, you're right. He, he He's training legs. And he gets deep. Oh, he's training hamstrings too. Okay, yeah. Well, if he's training hamstrings, he's uh, his legs are huge. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Hamstrings look. Hamstrings look good to me. I mean, yeah, this has never been a weak point for him. He's got some <laughs> yeah. of the best hamstrings in the league. Yeah. Okay. If not the well, best. Yeah. He, yeah. He's not missing the beat. Yeah, but um, also like what Ken said, when you start getting lean and maybe dehydrating, now what happens if you go? Tear it again, you know. Nobody wants that to happen, so that's not good. And um, he's already torn his hamstring before. I think before the uh, he said before the North, the USA's or something like that. Something yeah, I think it was before the USA's. Yeah, so, yeah. So, the same, uh, same one. I don't know. I don't know if it's the same one. That was years ago, man. What you... Yeah. So it, it's funny because I saw a couple of videos after he tore it, and they were like. Is it possible for him to come back from a hamstring in injury? Have anybody ever come back from a ha hamstring injury and Everybody been just as good? Yeah. That's exactly, that was exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. One. I'm like, the best one, they look, yeah. Bum says hamstring looks better after he tore it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's, it's like, <laughs> yeah, Fuad, Fuad tore his hamstring too and looked better. You know, exactly my point. There's just more and, stuff and, going on now. <laughs> 
they they didn't even know that Nick already had torn his hamstring before before they even happened his company. He torn his hamstring before you even knew who he was. You know, so bro, a torn hamstring is not gonna it's not gonna end your career, bro. It's, it's just not. Yeah. You should probably it's do it. It's, it's gonna help. It's gonna like, help your. It's gonna help that box. Bro, it's gonna help your career actually. <laughs> I, I, I'm willing to put money that Nick Walker is gonna be better than ever when he comes back. Whenever bro. he comes back, yeah. you know, he so. always is, man. He would have yeah. been amazing at the Olympia too. It's just you didn't get the chance. Yeah, let me pull up somebody who. Uh, I'm actually uh, he's he's impressing me um, because he kind of fell off, uh, but he's looking uh, he's looking like his old self again. Yeah, I think, just think he needed a break, dude. He was just beating the hell out of himself with all these shows for a long time. And yeah, and he, he did the, also huh? he did the Legion last year against yeah. Charles Griffin. Yeah, Bro, he, he did was, he was real off there. So he did so so many shows in the last three years. I don't even know. Can't even keep up. And people don't realize. Um, I don't remember his exact age. I don't even want to say it if I did remember, because you know I don't want to. But he he's older than, than most people think he is. Uh, let's just say that because he he was a, when I met him I was a kid basically and he was a grown ass man already. So if if I'm 31 he's a uh, he's he's a grown man. Um, he's up in his 40s, isn't he? I, yeah, I, I think early. so. I think yeah. so. I think he's in his early 40s. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, um, listen, I mean, he he looks phenomenal. Do uh, we know who he's working with. 1987. So, well, uh, 36, the, 37. 36. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's accurate. Where did you yeah, see that? I don't, I don't I, trust that. I just Googled something. Sorry. I'll keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> he's from, bro, keep in mind, he's not from here. He's from DR, bro. That, 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 uh, yeah, they got those baseball birth certificates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he got that, 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 that you know, Birth certificate a little bit uh might be a little different. Do we know? Do we know who he's working with uh this time? You know these New York Jersey guys, bro. You, you never know who they're working with. <laughs> hey, well, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> who is who, who is a, a like a Keem Williams working with? We, we, we don't even know at this point. Know, <laughs> we don't. You can't tell. They're, they're a little bit vague. They're a little bit Oscar. vague. Uh, Oscar <laughs> is, is Oscar Arden still alive? Like, is, like well, he, he heard his name in so he long. had some some like uh, personal life issues, right? He addiction He's not issues, anymore. and so oh, yeah, shit. he couldn't. He kind of fell off because of that. But he was good, man. Oscar He's and Akeem great. was the best. That was top six. Yeah, of the whole. yeah. That's what I was. That's what I meant. Yeah, Oscar was really good yeah. with them. You know, he he's not he's not coaching anybody right now. Uh, uh, I guess they just spilled the beans on on, on why he's not coaching anybody. <laughs> but yeah, he's he not yeah he's not he's not a coach anymore, from my understanding. Yeah. But I mean, uh, unfortunately, because he was a really really good. Uh, but he wasn't even a he was more than a coach. He was like a literal coach, like a basketball. Like he would coach the, these guys like mentally, physically, spiritually. Like he was like it, it was a different kind of coaching altogether. And so, somebody's he was cooking Kai's meals, man. When they're yeah. in the hotel, just like doing it A to Z, everything training. That was, that was such a gym. good video. Like that was, was great. That Overkill. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's my it's my favorite bodybuilding documentary. That's He's that's going benching five real... plates at like two in the morning. <laughs> oh, the man, real Kai Green. You know that. <laughs> that's, that's the real, real Kai Green. <laughs> <laughs> when you on prep. When you're on prep, you don't have the energy to get all, you know, uh, you know, philosophical. With like the yeah, with the with the with, with the philosophy. <laughs> you actually got to see the the real the real Kai. Okay, well, yeah, Justin looks pretty good, man. So hopefully he does well. You know, represent the Bronx. Speaking of Keem, let me see. Has the Keem posted anything? He has, yeah. He's been kind of vague, right, recently. I know, I know. When I saw him at, um, I saw him last year at the sem at at, at a pollen seminar. I know he was just coming off um a pretty and serious just, injury. He was in a car accident. He was, yeah. you know, yeah, and, and people didn't know about it. So he he was coming off a very very serious injury. He couldn't even he couldn't drive. He couldn't use that that like I think it was the right or left shoulder. I forget. He couldn't even use the limb. You know, um, he was going to PT every day just to get normal range of motion back. So yeah. he went through a lot last year, man. But but Akeem's kind of a quiet guy, so 
People don't yeah. really know. You know, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't complain about it. He didn't really make it a thing. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. gonna be in his forties now too, right? He might be uh, late thirties or maybe early forties. I don't know. It's hard to say. I told you yeah. these uh, East Coast guys are, are real vague. You don't really know. Because uh, De La Rosa just hit forty. De La Rosa yeah. just hit forty. So he's part of that Juan Morel. Juan Morel, De La Rosa. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're all around the same age. So he's probably forty or probably late thirties. At this mm -hmm. point, let's see. Uh, I believe Big Ramy posted something, right? What do you guys Those think were he's doing? Impressive, man. I I I, th I don't know if it was on his page, but I think it was on one of those repost pages because they snipped mm -hmm. it from one of the videos that got. Oh yeah, you right. They posted and they posted up somewhere else. Do Do you guys feel like people have always been like harder on Big Ramy than most people, yeah. or is it just me? Yes. Yes, you know, bro. From the from the get go, it's like this guy has he 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 came to the scene with all the tools you would want, and then people kind of just he he's such a nice guy, and every little thing he does, people blow it up. Like we've seen so many people coach up. Not that I don't think it's a good thing, but we've seen people do it. But he always got like buried for copping coaches. But so many people at the time were doing it as well, and nobody gets you know shitted on as much. The guy wins two Olympias, doesn't really get that much love from two Olympias. As soon as, God forbid, he loses his title, he's the worst thing on the planet. Like, he's so bad. Oh, get out of here. You need to retire. You're done. It's like, damn, can we, can the guy just compete? You know? And there's something about winning an Olympia that people don't actually talk about a lot is once you win that title, people don't look, people are just looking for holes in your physique. At that yeah, point, because because a lot of the issues that you know they point that, that have been pointed out for Big Rami, he's kind of had those you know uh, within the last couple of years. They've gotten worse, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like it just went from twenty to a hundred. You know, yeah. it was more like a 10 ten percent more prominent issue. So mm -hmm. it's like you know people kind of pointed out like, oh my God, he's his arms have withered away. They. They haven't really withered away. They just got a little bit smaller, but they're still bigger than ninety percent of people's arms. Exactly, so. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Bro, exactly. They they talk about this guy like he's an amateur elite bodybuilder or some shit. Like they talk about him like he's just like so so horrible, so so disgusting to look at. It's crazy. I I, I just don't see that. I thought he looked amazing at the Arnold. Am I the only one that thought, that thought he looked really good at the Arnold? Yeah, I thought he looked he great. Was yeah, and he, he was, was he was, was peeled, and he was bursting full. And like Ken said, right? Yeah, okay. Did his triceps come down a little bit? But he actually filled it up a little bit for the Arnold. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> same for the same, same, for the, <laughs> same for the hole in the leg, right? Oh, we don't like that hole in the leg. That dent was gone once again. I don't know if it was the stem cells, but some some. <laughs> Some covered those holes, right? <laughs> Listen, it's bodybuilding. We don't care how, how you did it, but you did yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Same with the back. Oh, he has, you know, nerve damage. Get out of here. You can't go your back again. Turns out it was like his posing and flexibility. And then he fixed it and he opened up. And that that uh, the nerve damage was was gone because I don't think it was nerve damage. I just think he was he wasn't posing properly and he was maybe tight. I don't know. Somebody wasn't, but he opened up and it looked great. So I but think he got, when you get mm -hmm. yeah, I think when you get as big as Rami and the guys who you see yeah. that lower back, lower lat disappearing on, I think that's because mm -hmm. the mobility gets worse, so they can't get the same range of motion when they're training that I they used to yeah, when they were I've beginning. Actually, I'm not anywhere near that size, obviously, but like I've started to notice, like I was watching some videos of me doing like a like a lat biased row yesterday, and like my my arm like just doesn't go back as far as it used to be able to. It's just running into stuff, you know. I'm still yeah, using yeah. my lat, right? But maybe I'm not getting as deep of a contraction down to my spine as I used to. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost like the the better you are, the more potential you have. The harder people are on you, and once you reach the top, people can't wait for you to get to the top. Once you reach the top, then it's all bad news after that. But listen, he's, man. Listen, it's as simple as this. Bodybuilding fans fucking suck. And, like, yeah. I say that as a bodybuilding fan. Because, like, I, I was sitting here nitpicking all this crap, too. And sometimes people have to point stuff out to me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that is a problem. But, like, 
it, I'm sorry, like at the Arnold, he did not deserve like fifth or whatever they gave him. That was mm -hmm. that was that harsh, was bro. Brutal, man. <laughs> like, like the guy that just look, he looked better at the Arnold than he did when he won the two Olympias. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He he filled out his back or you know posed his back better, filled out his tricep, filled out his quad, and then. He gets fourth at the Arnold when he was just a two time at Olympia. All of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, oh, he can't be beat. He's, he's he has the best X frame of all time. He's too wide. He's too big. He's in shape now. He's not gonna lose. The moment he loses, now he's so horrible. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I think. Like, I think. I don't think bodybuilders do themselves any favors because, like, obviously, he doesn't speak very English, so this isn't really his fault. But like, they're not great at communicating their personalities and like who they are to their fans all the time mm -hmm. um and like some people are better at that and, like it's it's kind of hard to hate somebody as a competitor when you feel like you know them you know like you yeah, kind of yeah. start to understand oh this isn't this isn't like an athlete this is a person who's got their own problems and like you know maybe mm -hmm. i shouldn't be such a dick to them yeah, um, yeah and i think people who are like that tend to get less shit online but a lot of a lot of us are shy and we find a hard time, you know, mm -hmm. trying to share ourselves like that. So it, it, it's funny because like we we don't we don't I guess we don't critique ph physiques, but we, you know we'll run down shows and stuff like that. And then when it happens to you yourself, you kind of realize how silly some of the stuff sounds, right? It's like, hey, baby, hey, man, great physique, but just bring up those quads a little bit, get a little sharper. You're gonna do better, and it's like you don't think I you don't think I'm aware of that. Like, <laughs> like yeah, you don't I, I, that, I'm man. aware of that. Lost, I mean, fuck. It's like we all. I think we all know this though. Like, not now, one of us doesn't know our weak points and know what we have to improve to be better. So, like, reiterating it doesn't really do much. So, like, if I see Stu, right, and let's say for whatever reason, I'm like, oh, Stu could have been tighter. I'm not gonna comment under under your show picks like, "Hey Stu, you should have been tight." I'm just gonna be like, "Yo Stu, you looked amazing, good shit," because I I already know you're aware that you could have been tight. Like, I mean, I trust your judgment, so like, it's also on me to like go and ask you that. Boom, you know, like, that, 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 that's my whole point. I, I, also, I think I like, also, if, go ahead. Ken. No, I, I'm I was I was gonna jump on something else, so I'll let you finish, Stu, and I'll, I'll go. Well, that. so like, if if uh, again, like it's. If you're better communicating as a public figure, right, then you can come on, just do a quick Instagram video like, hey, I placed third here. Uh, th you know, from what I understand, this is what I needed to work on. Just, like, get out in front of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. don't let people say it for you. Say it for yourself. And, and we're heading in the same path, too, because I think, for me, what I've noticed just bodybuilding-wise is – when one of these problems are brought up, it's not even the fact that it's an actual issue. It becomes magnified because so many people start talking about this one specific thing. And then it becomes this massive thing, you know, that you completely forget about the person's actual physique and how they actually look. And once you look at that picture, they're looking for that one thing on the physique. And that's all people can see. So like what Stu is saying, like if you can get ahead there and kind of talk about it, it kind of almost does a little bit of damage control. But I feel like with the way the, the landscape is, you know, you look at the comments on, on the person's post. It's like, you know, Brahmi puts a front double or like a, a front lat spread with, with his pants down or whatever. And people are looking for the hole. All it takes is someone to say, I still see that hole there. And then three videos pop up that day. And before you know it, that lat spread that he was posting, no one cares about it anymore. They're yeah, just looking yeah, at the yeah. hole on his leg, you know, yeah, because yeah. that's how it started with the whole Chad thing. I think Chad um, posted his, uh, his progress photo and he looked good. It was just that hole. People saw that little part, you know, that hole in his quad. And then the whole thing blew up. Everyone completely forgot about the progress. It was just about the hole on his leg, you know? <laughs> So forget about the whole rest of him, how, how huge yeah. he is, how conditioned no. he is, how complete he is. It's like, That's it's fucking absurd. And like, the crazy thing is, is like when, when I, I remember they did one of those recap videos, like I think it was Tyler. Right. And he mentioned the hole in his leg. Like these guys are watching social media. Like the judges are watching social media and they're watching comments. And like, I'm sorry, like 
a little divot in someone's quad. Some people just have that, you mm -hmm. know, naturally. It's just how their fucking leg is shaped. You know, it the develops. So, like, I guess that's not really what's happening with him. But, like, I'm, that doesn't destroy how good his legs are because they're really good. <laughs> and, Here's the funny part. The head judge is fucking okay. saying that, you know? Here's the funny part, right? When you're actually not that good yet, people only look at your strengths, right? So let's say Sam Sillick, he looks amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a 21-year-old YouTuber. He looks amazing. All anybody sees are strengths. Oh, wow, look at his shoulders, look at his arms, look at his back. Oh, he's so great. Let Sam step on stage and become pro. And let's say, for instance, he does classic and, and makes it to the Olympia. This is just random, right? But as soon as he actually starts become becoming an actual good bodybuilder, all of a sudden they go, like, oh, I don't like his look, look at his chest. Why does his chest look like that? Why is it so narrow? Right. Once you're actually good, is when you're oh, when everybody only looks at the flaws. Before you get there, it's all positive. It's all you know. Oh, Phil, Phil Heath is the greatest. Oh, Phil Heath's so good. Once he starts winning, then it's like, oh, why is yeah. he so narrow? Oh, look at his belly button. Right. Ooh, you know, yeah. it's like Remember once you actually book. become. Huh? You remember Callum Von Moger, like before I he kind of like fucked himself up and he was still yeah. competing? Everyone was like, oh my God, this guy's going to like go to the Olympia in class. Oh, and yeah. Just look at him like, dude, this guy couldn't win a local bodybuilding show if there were some <laughs> good guys there, let alone a national level bodybuilding show. Yeah, like, yeah. like he was a decent bodybuilder, but there was just serious flaws there. But he's got all these Dick Rider fans, and this is on the fans more than anything. Who are just going to be like, oh, you should be the best ever. Like, you don't know what you're looking at, man. Yeah. Because look at, look at, mm. sorry, Stu. We, we, mean, those, we keep, those, we keep those, bashing today. We keep those, bashing. Those, those, <laughs> those are the people talking shit in the comments who don't know what they're looking at, you know? Because right. a lot Derek. of times, yeah, go ahead, Ken. Look at Derek, right? I mean, Mr. Olympia, before he, he actually took the title, everyone's been saying, oh, his front double is beautiful, this, yeah. that. Now it's like, oh, why is he so soft from the front? You know, now people are... Look at, look yeah, at armpits. People are, no one cares anymore about the waist or the vacuum. People are more concerned about why is he, why is he harder from the back than from the front. That's that's the yeah, main theme yeah. with Derek right now. So it's mm -hmm. it's just difficult, you know. It's a lot of pressure as a as a top pro. It, it's, go ahead, it, it's, it's, sorry. It's, oh yeah, go ahead, sir. Yep. A lot of times you see the fans making these negative comments. They're the ones who haven't actually been on stage. Whereas in sports, like professional sports, most of the fans have actually played football, maybe just in high school, middle school, whatever. They play basketball, these sports. But the majority of the fans who've done body who are following bodybuilding yeah. haven't actually competed to understand the sport properly and understand the criteria. And so they have these imaginary flaws. They hyper focus on these things that don't matter when mm -hmm. really you're looking at these amazing physiques that you should I was be gonna say, I, I was going to say the, the, that's the biggest issue. The biggest issue is that nowadays – Probably maybe more than maybe more than half the fans or, or or let's say half the fans aren't actually bodybuilding fans. Like they don't actually know what bodybuilding is. They think they're fans because they watch Nick Sheriff from Power, right? So they think, okay, <laughs> uh, yeah. Nick uh, was uh, so bad about that. He's like, oh, can can I, I like Nick? Nick's cool. Like, me too. Yeah. But he also is catering to a normie audience who doesn't know what exactly my about. point. You know, and he's yeah. like, could could Callum win the Olympia? Like. Nick, you know that you know he can't. You know he just can't cause, pro. Just because you follow Sebum, you follow Sam Sulik, and you watch Nick Sheriff and Power, doesn't make you like this, you know, like this valuable, credible person, right? So it's like you can't like me and Ken can sit here and debate because we respect each other's knowledge. But if you hop in the comments and you're like yeah, uh, Rich Piana had big arms, so and he and he was popular, so big arms. And I'm like, well, I I can't even debate you because you don't you don't you have no idea what we're even talking about here, right? You can you can only yeah. you can only debate somebody. <laughs> a, a debate only works when you're making good points, right? So Ken makes a big a, a good point. I'm like, okay, I hear that, and I try to counter it with another good point. He's like, oh shit, I hear that, but that that's what a debate is. If you have no idea what you're talking about, you can't have a debate. So a lot of these people who are in the comments, they they're clueless. Bump said, "Oh, Bump said he's gonna he uh he could he could place top three at the open right now. He doesn't even have to add muscle." 
And then, and, and then who is bodybuilding? They'll post like this picture next to Rafael Brandao. And I'm like, there's so much wrong here. I don't even know where to start because <laughs> it, it's, it's not a good comparison. You have to see it in person because I've seen both of these guys. I've seen Brandao and Bumstead. Ra Ra Rafa, uh, Rafa Brandao isn't even a big bodybuilder in comparison to the other pros. But compared to Bumstead, it's not even close, bro. Bumstead is a big guy structurally, but the amount of muscle on Brandel, I would say Bumstead is a bigger guy than Brandel structurally. But the amount of muscle on Brandel's body compared to Bumstead is not even in the stratosphere. That picture, in the picture, they look like it looks like Bumstead beats him, or they look close. It's not close. It's not even close. Rafa, Rafa is considered small at 5'10, 5'11. 245. He looks, dude, he looks pretty fucking big right now going to the arm, though. He, he well, he, 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 like he's definitely arms gonna be and bigger. Lats, they're fucking bigger for but, but let's say the person. old one. Yeah, yeah. And then Bumstead has three inches on him and is is lighter than him by like, I don't know, five pounds. <laughs> no, like like <laughs> he's taller than him, you know, but 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 my whole thing is that you don't understand. Like if if Regan is undersized at 260, shorter than Bumstead. How the fuck would Bumstead? It doesn't because he has a small waist. Like what? What are we talking about here? Who has more that, followers? That's not. Who has more followers? <laughs> <It's that simple. laughs> now, now, like at least I could hear you saying, like uh, I, I would have it. I don't know why, but I was going back and forth with, with with a Brazilian guy about Ramon. Oh, never, and then, never wise, bro. <laughs> yeah, but but then I, I, what? One of the guys jumped in the argument, and he's like, "Okay, okay," but if we're gonna talk about potential. What if Ramon did open bodybuilding and was 30 pounds bigger? I'm like, whoa, that's a whole different debate. F of, of course. Like, yeah, I mean. Fucking crazy, yeah. He, he would look insane. 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 I, I'm not going to say he's going to beat Samson and beat Derek, but it wouldn't be impossible. It wouldn't be out the question. You know, he's good enough. So I, I have no issue with that. If, if you were saying in this hypothetical world, if Bumstead would have chose bodybuilding and was 30 pounds bigger, that's a whole different conversation. But to say that this look is going to revolutionize the sport and beat everybody. That's just that's just ridiculous. I'm sorry. He's great, he, but it's a different game. And he did choose bodybuilding. I mean, he turned pro as a bodybuilder. Yeah, you know, he did. Uh, before yeah. before classic ever came out. It's just it's just the reality of things. And I just think that, like you said, there's just this disconnect between you know people that actually know what's going on in the sport and how the sport works versus what they see. So another one that that just that just drives me up. You know, is when they always say every time the Olympia Arnold comes up, oh, it's Kai Green jumping in. You know, it's Kai Green jumping in. That's Ari's muscle's <laughs> last lifeline, like, oh every fucking God. time. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, this guy is not jumping in the Arnold or the and Olympia. Dude, Can we just let this die? You know, you know Sadiq Faruqi, every time he has to make that post, because he manages the account, he's like, damn it, Dave, do I have to do this again? Damn it, Dave. <laughs> but it's the 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 most the most cringe part is especially when they say like oh he would win if he came back yeah. and it's like yeah bro no. even like what was uh five six years ago he didn't even beat cedric he only he he, he won the pros round and lost the physique round we're talking about cedric five six years ago but how, how would he win to, it, it doesn't correlate you know it doesn't, it doesn't make yeah. sense it it, it kind of showed that that kind of shows yeah. like Maybe like your disconnect from the sport. If you if you honestly believe that Kai could come back today and win, you know, or, or even the last five years, you know, I think and he's, he's, Dave's got to do this as a joke at this point, just because he knows it pisses people. It off. has to because he knows what he's looking at. Like it's not <laughs> <Yeah>. happening. <laughs> it has to because he's even he's not even as big as he used to be. You know what I mean? It's no. going to take at least a year or two to, and he's already Bro, what he's, in his mid to late forties. I mean, come on, close to fifty now. Yeah, yeah. Come yeah, on. it's not even it, it's not even close it's and he's been close. competing since the early 90s like before i was born like he was doing natural shows back in like 93 yeah. 94 i think he started as a teenager teenager crazy yeah yeah, I yeah mean, he was let me pull this up too i'm not gonna pull up kai green don't worry thank you <laughs> <laughs> like you were saying too baby the criteria is totally different you know like kai was in the era where they weren't valuing you know, the structure, the waistline as much. And mm -hmm. now with that, what he has, it, it would just wouldn't, it wouldn't be rewarded. Speaking of uh, comebacks, I don't think Flake's going to come back, but how do you think uh, he's looking 
like four or five years removed. And Jack Dad, it's awesome. It's good. It's good. <laughs> him, him, and, him and Seth Ferrosi are uh, they're the top contenders for the most Jack Dads right now. Bro, yeah. Seth's yeah. legs just get me rattled every time I see him. Yeah. Don't you like run rucks and stuff? Like he's doing cardio <laughs> and he's still got crazy legs. And so the thing with Flex is like his yeah. face is, I don't know if you guys know, his face is like sunken in. Yeah, yeah, it always is. These, I'm like, damn, dude. Like, you are you are definitely lean, my man. Well, bro, you know he had shredded glutes, right? Did, did you see that? When did, he yeah. he made a post, and I was like, why the fuck does Flex have shredded glutes? <laughs> I, I thought that was insane. <laughs> well, you know, you know Chris Tuttle? Chris yeah. Tuttle is yeah. just, yeah, he's like 220, 210 or something now. So he's light, but he's still got, like, crazy big legs, and gee, he's just shredded all the time. Because he just eats so, clean and works out and doesn't take any do, drugs. He, he takes like do some, you guys a little growth? So, so let me let me ask you because I'm seeing this across the board. Like these guys are all working hard, obviously. Like, but do you think that you know because when you're an active competitor, you know you're pushing food all the time. You're obviously in your in your contest season. You're 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 you know you're running high compounds and whatnot. Do you think that just having maybe like a little bit above TRT and just having a regular meal plan and, you know, regular cardio sessions as you will. Do you think that that's kind of going to put you in a better, because I feel like all these guys, they're definitely not pushing as hard as they used to when they were mm -hmm. competitors, but they look, even if they're lighter, they look a lot better body comp wise mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to when they were, you know, active pros. So what do you guys think? Because I feel like there's something there's something there. Because even Compton, right? Look at Compton. I mean, the yeah. guy looks insane. You know, <laughs> I think I, I think so because you're gonna hold less water. You're not force yeah. feeding. It's sh shit like that. Yeah, but I think if any one of us went on TRT, with maybe two, three IEs of growth, maybe like six with Stu, uh, and, and we just we kind of <laughs> we we, we kind of <laughs> ate clean. But not like in a crazy surplus. I think we would look like leaner, harder, like you know, year round basically. So look at his glutes, bro. What you th the did you fuck, see that, dude? What the why, fuck? <laughs> why does he have shredded glutes? <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, look to like because he can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, I, I, I think there's something to be said about that. Like I, I feel like that, that's probably like the Mike O'Hearn special, you know, like TRT with some growth. And, you know, you can kind of keep your body composition nice, you know, and, and kind of go from there. Yeah, and, you know, you, you still look pretty, like, he's not big in real life, but, like, he still looks like a bodybuilder, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He clearly yeah. still trains and eats. I know that, like, what took him out, because he was trying to go to the Open, right? He, but what took him out was his gut. Like, he was having mm -hmm. awful gut issues, just puking stuff up. And, you know, so he probably went down to eating like once or twice a day just to for the relief from his stomach issues and did he have did, did he, he have Popeyes? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> but you know, if, if you if you just drop your calories significantly and you're still working out and you know eating at least a little protein, if you've had, you know, shitloads of muscle on you for 20 years, it's not just gonna fall off. You're gonna get yeah. super lean. Because you're yeah. just in a huge caloric deficit right off the bat. Where, where does this, where does this place in uh in in twenty twenty three? Open two twelve. Uh, open, open. Mm. I think top four. Think so. Yeah. It's like who, who has that level of conditioning nowadays? Who got oh, oh Brandon? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I think he, I think he, he's gonna be Brandon. I think it would be brand new. I mean, j j just off of the upper lower uh, balance and the condition, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Nick wasn't there, obviously. But in that lineup that we had last year, I think that that has to be Brandon, doesn't it? Like Brandon. Is, so. uh, I'll, be honest, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you guys. I, I don't mm -hmm. think so. I think he's oh, yeah. probably going to he's probably going to be ahead of Tonio because Crizzo was in. Phenomenal condition too. Everyone forgets that Crizzle was probably just a few of his hottie. Uh, he's not as balanced as Flex, obviously, but there's a size. There's also a size dis dis discrepancy as you start to go up. You know, but, with the Brandons but, and Andrews. Crizzle also lost his 
freak factor though. He he didn't look massive. You seen that picture next to Regan? He didn't actually look bigger than Regan because he came in so peeled. You know, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. So with Flex, right? Flex is not going to be big. Like, you know, once you, those top two, Heidi and Heidi and Derek, they're on the other side, right? So their comparison, they're not being compared a lot of times to that three down where you've got the the, the Samson, the the Brandon, the the Andrew Jacks. These are all really really tall guys, mm -hmm. and I feel like he would have a hard time in those comparison rounds with those guys, even if he's the most conditioned, but the size, the size the discrepancy would be pretty high. You know? but that's just what I think. Uh -huh. Paul, what my, are you saying? My, my, oh, who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? Paul. Paul's going to oh, say yeah. I want to hear Paul and Sid. I want to hear their, their takes. Yeah. Um, I appreciate this. will be Brandon. I mean, you look at, I mean, pretty much all around basic structure. I mean, his legs are so much better. You know I mean? His back is fucking insane. I mean, you guys are talking about him being small. This is him at 212. Let's put another 15 pounds on him. And how much how much better he's going to be, you know what I mean? How much he was, fuller he's going to be. Yeah, he, remember, he was in shape at, like, 227. Like, skinless. Yeah. And yeah. then he sucked down. I mean, Derek D D Derek wasn't, <laughs> like, he wasn't big, like, like, like structure-wise, necessarily. And even size-wise. Derek is big structure-wise. Like, well, he's wide. Yeah, he's wide. He, he's wide as fuck. Yeah. He is wide, but but he's also he's also five six, is what I mean, right? Yeah. Be, 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 because we uh, we're talking about in comparison to Crizzo, how would he look because of his height? I, I think because of his height, he would actually look bigger because he would look filled out, right? Like Hadi and Derek, like they're not as big, like stretched out as as Andrew or Samson, but they're 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 more compact as far as more filled in. You yeah, know, pound, I, pound for pound for pound, they'll be the most filled in. Most, the most, the, the, most filled that's in. my point. You know I mean, so pound for pound, I don't believe Flex is going to look small in that lineup. Uh, honestly, and he has but, no weaknesses. Uh, like name a weak body part on him. He doesn't have the smallest waist. Oh. He doesn't have the widest shoulder structure. But yeah, there but is just nothing good. missing. It all. I mean, Jay didn't have the smallest waist either, right? But like the way it all fit together and flowed. And there were no gaps, and it was conditioned, and like uh, it's real impressive. I, I want to hear Sid's thoughts first, yeah, and, then, uh, no, and, then, no, and no. then I'll jump in. <laughs> I, I gotta agree with uh, you guys, just because you look at the guys who've been placing well from who've gone up from two twelve. You look at you look at Hadi, you look at Derek, and then you've got Nick, who's another shorter guy. They're rewarding these guys that are short but filled out next in that top in that first call out of the Olympia. And so I don't think size would be an issue at all. You know, like you guys said, complete, peeled. And just if you're talking about Crizzo, who was in seventh, right? I don't think that the way he was thinned out through the through the through the legs in the back that he could stand next to somebody who's just who like Flex, who's gonna be just bigger and better at the in the open compared to the G twelve. Yeah. And like Crizzo though. Say, you, you, no, you, you I, like Crizzo to the I, I would say, hear me out. Okay. He's got big arms. He's got big arms. All right. <laughs> Are we doing this again? We not? No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. I agree with you guys. If, if Flex was like, you know, in the two twenties, not two twelve, because I feel like that two twelve, he gets yeah, a little yeah. bit depleted. You know, from the fact, back, fact, he's fact. a lot. He's a lot harder um, from the back. Fact. His front is still good, but from the back, he's a lot harder. So if he was on the two twelve cap. I would say no, he's going to be in that seventh. But if he had to, you know, go open and he was actually like around the 225, 220s, yeah, I agree with you guys. Yeah. He'll definitely be at like the top, top, you know. Cause, cause, he, cause he, even back then, he was like, at least, at least they claimed he was ready like in the 220s. Yeah. So it, it, if he had like as much time as Derek had, you know, maybe, you know, even like a six month period where he could not restrict, restrict the food and step on stage 225. Then uh yeah I mean obviously if, if Andrew was a bit tighter Andrew would have beat Brandon right if Andrew bought Texas look he would have beat Brandon and then and then maybe he beats uh he he probably beats Flex so then then maybe Flex is looking at fifth but let's say top five right let's say top five yeah I could see Flex yeah yeah top five it, it, it like the two twenty I would agree if he had to make the cap he wouldn't have to make the cap because he's an open but if yeah. if it's the exact two twelve look. I could I could see your point, but but let him do what Derek did and kind of like eat up a little bit. Then yeah, I could see I could see top five, especially with, with today's criteria. Maybe the criteria from ten years ago, maybe not because 
the 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 smaller guy if not uh, like especially height wise maybe didn't get the same nod they get now you know so oh it's a beautiful just, time to be a short guy in bodybuilding I'll tell you that why <laughs> <laughs> for today baby is there anybody else we need to check out we checked out Rami and all that uh, Akeem I think we checked everybody out you uh, talk I did about see the uh, photo op who's that? <laughs> Oh, oh no. yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, What's that? Fuck. This pisses me off, dude. Well, this piss me oh, off. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm stirring the I, pot here, man. I saw Sue's story, and I knew that'd be mentioned on this one. <laughs> okay, can I can I kick this off? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so right there on sale now. Photo, ah, oh, baby, I'm getting my tickets tonight. Yeah. Okay, so one of my somebody in my discord server like actually clicked on this link and they went there and they looked at what it costs it is 50 dollars to get a photo with one of these guys and if you want them to sign something for you it's another 30 bucks now th i don't know how who decided to set this shit up like who who set the prices who decided to charge for pictures how much money these guys are even getting like percentage wise about out of all this crap but like i'm sorry man i i just think Personally, it's really scummy to ask your fans to pay for a picture with you in the modern era. Like, okay, let's say 20 years ago, Jay Cutler's in an expo, right? He's on his feet 12 hours a day. He's got a stack of 100 pictures of him that he signed and he's selling to fans for five bucks, 10 bucks a pop, you know? Fucking, okay, that's cool. Like, you're getting like a high quality photo signed by the guy. There you go. It's 10 bucks. You make, I, he talks about making money doing that. But like, this is a cell phone picture or maybe they're, maybe they're taking high quality nope. photos and sending it to you later. I don't know, but like it's digital. It takes like two seconds, $50. I mean, what the fuck? That's wild. <laughs> I think you do get an eight by 10 though. I looked at it and I thought, like print that it? They, yeah, that you got an eight by 10 print. I was pretty sure. Okay. But okay, okay. Here's but the thing. Still, this, that's expensive. Are you justifying the value here, Sid? <laughs> no, I'm saying that's expensive. Like you, you wouldn't catch me. Like I probably wouldn't even stand in line to take a picture with any of these guys. To be honest, just because they're I, like I'm a I'm a I'm a grown man. You know, like these are just yeah, men yeah, to me. You know, I'm not going to yeah, stand yeah. in line to take a picture with another man, right? Mm, but uh, there, uh, this is a different time, right? This is a different time. This is not the 90s, right? Like, these people, all these five people are making a shit ton of money from their fans already. You know, j just off of them supporting by buying their brands and uh, with Sam is literally just the views. I mean, his views alone, having millions of fans watching your videos, you know, uh, every day, he's making a, a, a very comfortable living doing that. So... That that's because, the point I was exactly trying to make, Beatty, is mm -hmm. if if you had the if you were gonna say, okay, we want to do this because obviously the revenue stream for bodybuilders has has kind of reduced since the, the print era, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of these bodybuilders used to make a lot of money um when you go to expos. Well, the problem here is these are the top of the top. The regular bodybuilders, I, these guys don't need this money. Let's be yeah. honest here, you know? Not yeah. one of them. So it doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't. That, that That's what makes it strange. Imagine Fit Nation podcast. We start getting a million views per episode. And then, I, and then you know, I, I'm getting, you know, a hundred grand, a hundred grand a week. And then I start paying you guys, right? And then now we go to the gym and we start charging people to take pictures. It, it, it's just not, it doesn't come off right because- you're already making the living off, off your fans. Now that being said, this is the Arnold promoting this, so I would assume they, they're already getting fixed salaries for this. So they're not like it, it wasn't like 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 they're the ones that bought this idea. I'm sure Bumstead and Sam didn't say, "Hey, hey Arnold, let, let's charge people to take photos." I, I'm sure it wasn't like that. They, they they probably already paid them, tell them come take pictures, and then they they said so they probably didn't even know this was going to happen in this way until it actually happened. They were probably just uh, you know under the understanding that they're about to make a bunch of money to go show up at the Arnold. They probably didn't know that people were going to actually literally pay money to take pictures with them. So I, I'm sure if you ask Bumstead or Sam, they're going to be like, "Oh, I wasn't aware it was going to go down like this." But now that they are aware, I don't think they're going to say, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to give you this million dollars back." Or not a million, a hundred, a hundred K you paid me. I'm going to give it back to you. They're probably not going to give back the money, 
right? So they're probably going to keep the money and be like, fuck it. It's not, it's not my idea, but the Arnold want to do it. They're going to do what they want to do. So we're not we're not gonna blame the athletes because I don't think the athletes were the ones no, who said this stuff. No, that's that's not no. my that's not my intention no. here at all. Yeah, somebody's yeah. making a lot of money off of this, whether it's the Arnold or their sponsors or whatever, right? The I, Arnold, these guys are all cool dudes, and they they don't need the money, obviously. 100%. And another thing, okay. like I wanted to say, like obviously Sam is the odd man out here because he's not like <laughs> you know a legend in the sport or anything. I don't mm-hmm. like he's super popular though, so like you can't. Obviously, he's going to have maybe a bigger line than any of these guys besides oh, Chris. Hundred and ten percent. Sam is going to have the biggest line there. The only rationale I could see for charging this much money is to limit the size of the line. But mm-hmm. still, it's oh, dude, it, it just comes it's, off as gross to me. Yeah, because yeah. think about it, right? You, if you want to take a picture, say, say you're a young kid that's uh, I don't know, 16, 17, you go to the Arnold Dave, you know, you want to take a picture with Sam, your favorite hero and Chris Bumstead. That runs you 160 bucks just right off the rip, you know, yeah. for a side photo for both of them. I mean, it's it's a lot. Like, you know, yeah. if 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 you made it like I won't complain, honestly, if it was like 30 bucks. Say like yeah, 30 yeah. bucks, you know, yeah, the athlete gets like 20. Yeah, like like yeah, I won't yeah. complain, but I think it's a little bit it's a little bit high because you know, like like you said, I I like to see, you know, more avenues for people to make money in the sport. Of course, these are the very top of the sport, so it doesn't really matter what they make, but a $35 for for a picture with Jay Cutler or Ronnie Coleman, you know, Ronnie Ronnie's dedicated his life to this stuff. I I'm okay mm-hmm. with that, but $80, yeah. I don't know. That's what. By the way, I'll be I'll be at the Arnold, and it's 120 bucks per photo. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna say when they're when these guys are at their booths, what happens to the fans who come up and want to take a picture? Then, you know, yeah. at their their boot boot booths, what's gonna happen? Probably not gonna allow it, man. Like we yeah. we're not having that. Yeah, we can't have that, baby. You better pay that fifty dollars. Yeah, I hey, um, photo up. I did cash, see a couple of only, photos. by the way. <laughs> I did. I, I did see a couple of posts that it seemed like some of the, I guess, what do you call it? The, uh, not even old school. Uh, yeah, I guess old school. Some of the, but the more old school uh, purists, they were mad that Sam was even included to this list. Now, that that shouldn't be the reason why this obsessive. It, 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 it should be the, <laughs> the, the reason should be that they're charging this much money. But that being said. I've seen Bumstead, Jay, and Sam. They, they, they uh, all three of them were at Gold Venice, not at the same time, but at different times, right? When Jay was there, you had like maybe people over the age of thirty. Maybe every twenty, thirty minutes, somebody came and took a picture with him, right? When Bumstead was there, maybe every ten minutes, somebody took a picture with him. Now, when Sam was there, <laughs> it was a whole different. Uh, <laughs> I can guarantee you at this point of time, nobody's going to have the line that Sam, Sam Selig, not even Bumstead. It's crazy as it sounds. We never thought, you know, we're going to see. But it's also, Bumstead is leaving more of a legacy, I believe, whereas Sam, I think it's a now thing. I don't know. I don't think this is necessarily going to be this way for the next 10 years, right? Whereas some of these guys, they're legends forever. We don't know what Sam is going to do in the future, but this is more of a temporary thing, I would assume. I just can't see it getting any crazier than this. But yeah, when Sam was at Venice, it was a whole different thing. Like the whole the whole gym was like paralyzed, right? People are outside. It, 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 it would have became like a mob scene, you know, if he was there too long. So it's a whole different level that even Bumstead doesn't bring. So he, he if we're talking about like fan base. Yeah, he definitely deserves to be there. You know, it's like they don't care what you've done. You know, in, in 2024, it's not about what you've done. It's about how cool you are, how popular you are. That's just the. And at these the expos, world. like 90, 95% of the people at booths are influencers. They're popular people who don't compete. Like, so, like, mm-hmm. to single out Sam is like, oh, you haven't done anything. Well, yeah, so have most of the other, you know, hot exactly. chicks <laughs> selling bang energy drinks at the Arnold. Okay, so yeah. play off, man. And they want pictures, and, too. <laughs> yeah. And, and let's be let's be real. Let's be real, right? Brady, you, you brought up a great point. The fitness industry in general and the supplement industry has been funded from time eternal by the age group of 16 to 21-year-olds. Mm-hmm. Rear old guys, you know, yeah. 
a, a lot of these guys, their their fans outside of maybe Chris Bumstead, but Sam is that guy that is gonna bring in those new people, even if he's not a competitor. He's mm-hmm. the one that's bringing. If if Sam is going to the Arnold, his fans are coming to the Arnold, and they have yeah. no idea what bodybuilding is. They don't care. No. They They're coming to the too. Arnold because they want to see Sam. So for from a business perspective, I mean, of course, they want him there. And, and you trust me, with how successful this thing is going to be, he's going to have something similar at the Olympia. Trust me, everyone wants in on making that money. Trust yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, yeah, for sure. Money is a, a, money is a hell of a drug, I'll tell you that. And it's a good yeah. thing for the sport, too, because if like 0.1% of his fans – end up taking the shit serious and going hard at bodybuilding like we might have some new freaks show up because just because they're training hard and they got into it because because of him that's why i don't even i don't even mind i actually i actually like sam a lot i like him a lot yeah like he's showing he's showing what it takes he's he may not be competing but he's showing what it actually takes to actually get a great physique and maybe one day compete. You know, a lot of these guys, mm-hmm. they go on gear and, you know, they, they go to the gym for the first time. They're doing the one arm rows with, with 20 pounds and they think they're training, you know, yeah. he's actually showing the actual process. And I think mm-hmm. that, you know, with more people you put that in front of, like Stu said, if you can convert one to 2% of people to actually want to compete, he's not doing classic physique. He's too he big won't. for classic physique. Yeah. He's going to introduce more bodybuilders to the scene. Right. So I, I hate that we have to sit here and make those caveats because okay? there's so many other old heads, like hardcore bodybuilders, who are like, oh, who is this kid? Fuck this kid. Like, and we have to sit here as like serious bodybuilders and be like, Hey, no, this is a good thing. I like him. Great, great thing. Yeah. Well, because remember for, for a while we had the, the era of the, the, the broccoli hair Psalm goblins, right? Where they would have the the short shorts with the oversized tee showing the no legs they have. We're, we're but, still in that era. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but now, now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing kids with over with baggy sweats, you know, oversized tees with the curly hair, and they're training like animals, right? But here's the thing: I fucking love it. Like all that ugly form shit. As long as there's some tension on the muscle, I'm like. I much prefer that seeing the kid roll the stack with with a with a seven out of ten form than seeing the kid skinny as fuck doing this. Cause this kid, these kids, they're already bigger. They're already bigger than 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 than, than the Psalm Goblins, and they they just started. You know, they they're at my gym, bro. The one of them is my clients, bro. He's sixteen. He he he's the maybe the 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 fifth biggest guy at the gym. He's sixteen, bro. Think about that because of this kind of influence, you know, and, and he came up to me, Hey, I want you to coach me. Why? Because of people like Sam. So look, he wants to be a bodybuilder. Whereas he probably would have hired some random, I don't know, gym shark athlete that goes to one of these gyms to coach him if it was five years ago. But now it's like, I think the influence is great. They're actually training hard, you know, and they're not, they're not in it for the wrong reason. Like the glitz and glamor. They want to, you know, be a pretty boy and they want to drive the Lambos. It's just pure passion. And I fucking love that. You know, that's, that's what I want to see personally. You know. All right, but we've been on like an hour, hour and a half. You think it's time for, uh, I think we covered everything. You time for questions, you say? Anything under the sun. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah let's let's do some questions. questions. Nothing else to talk about. Yeah, let's do some questions. <laughs> well, there's a lot of questions today. Okay. I'm going to try to avoid similar Similar questions. Are big are big calves a detriment? Can oh fuck it. Uh, 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 after, are big calves a detriment? Can they take away from quad size? It's possible. I mean, they, they would have to be freakishly fucking big. Like uh what's that guy's name? Frank Hauser. Frank Hauser. Oh. Yeah. That is probably something you don't need to worry about, dude. <laughs> 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 I thought, like, at one point, I thought Zade's calves and and quads were so big that I thought it was going to limit him, you know, at one point. But he kept balancing out his feet. I don't even feel like I, I, now, like, w- would you look at him and be like, too much legs? Or would you look at him and be like, no, I've never thought that. You know, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah, it, it kind of looks. But mind you, I, I, I've known Zade for longer, but now. 
okay, of course you look at it like, like, oh, that's that's really good legs, right? But it's not like a distraction. It's not like it's saying in comparison to upper body, there's such a big difference, right? He looks he looks aesthetic, actually, right? I, I, I would call Jade yeah. aesthetic. So yeah, so yeah. Uh, it depends, you know. I don't think he feels that way, but that's how it looks. Yeah, and listen, for from a guy, my calves are just okay. But dude, in the summertime, man, you want big calves, man. When you wear those shorts, oh, yeah. you got some big ass calves. It looks you freaking good, you know. <laughs> dude, you guys want to want to do, wanna do a, a rate my physique? I, I was trying to stay away from it, but uh, I feel like we've been getting uh, quite a bit. You want you, you want to try that? You want to try Let's that? Fuck him up. Let's go. <laughs> right, let, me, let me let me share the screen. Can I pull up my own? Roast my physique. Roast my physique. (laughs) Stole the words out of my mouth. Stu's going to roast. Everybody else will rate. (laughs) I see. Flores. Oh, no. That's Uh, Elsie Flores. That's uh, Luis. Oh, Elsie? Yeah. I I know him. Yeah. He's from Arizona. Uh Oh, Oh, it's Elsie. So you oh, want to give us a scoop? You want to give us a oh, scoop God. on this guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Wait, did, did you do the... I've it, known, it's a bad, it's a bad idea? <laughs> yeah, he just put me on his podcast. I've known Luis for about um, seven years now, man. Uh, he's a classic physique guy. He um, just uh, did did bodybuilding one or two times, but he's classic physique now, class D type of guy. He's placed uh, fourth at the USA's a couple oh, of years back. Good. So yeah, how Where much does he weigh? Um, I think he's used in shape. I think he's in the two twenties. Okay, so he's tall. He's pretty tall. Yeah, he's tall. Class D, tallest class for. Oh, class okay, D. yeah. So he he got to be like uh, over six two. Yeah, yeah. Holy At least shit! That, yeah. Holy Big shit! Guy. That's that's tall as shit. It's always hard okay. to tell like height when you look at pictures, you know. Yeah, because I, I didn't think he was that like tall. A, Holy shit! Like David, you know, like 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 the last yeah, time. Yeah, tell. yeah. <laughs> okay, so let, who wants to who wants to start? Let, look at Paul's face. Why you look like that, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at it too. I was looking at it too. <laughs> okay. Alright, do I have to do it? I'll, I'll yeah, do okay. it. Right. you go ahead and start, Stu. Oh, oh, his condition looks good. Yeah, he, no, he, his he's structure looks good. He's got a good vacuum. Um, hamstrings, no hamstrings. Yeah, he needs, <laughs> he needs hamstrings. Um, yeah, he's missing. His chest looks good from the side there. Yeah, let's see the back now. Yeah, let's see the back on. Uh, yeah, you need to be harder on the glutes and hams. I, I feel like yeah, I feel like the entire oh, pause, back. Pause. Can you pause it? Oh, I think so. Oh shit. A little late. I missed it. I missed oh, it um, <laughs> okay. I think. So huh? you said he did bodybuilding in the past? Yeah, a couple, several years ago. I, I'm going to steer clear of this one because I've told Luis everything in private. I don't want to go <laughs> go hitting him up in, <laughs> okay. in okay. public. I'll let you guys do it. So the problem here is like upstairs, he's got good shape, mm-hmm. but it's not like, holy shit, what the fuck shape, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, um, I think. How, do you know if he has any more weight to put on below the cap? Yeah, he's got plenty of room. I think he he wants to get to like two seventy five in the off season. The biggest he's been is something like two fifty five. So he knows okay. he has to grow quite a bit. Yeah, o- like overall pretty balanced. I mean, my knee jerk reaction is always to s- tell people to like do open because like he, like his his quads are like decent but they're not like popping out off of his hip and super flary and you know and usually yeah. if that's the case then you gotta just get huge boom. legs yeah you know? boom you, you, so, you don't know and he, what is he like six one or something he's a yeah tall guy? six six two i think luis is i want to say he's uh he's close to 30 now but the okay. thing is he doesn't want to really push the supplements that you need okay. to do that he'd need to do to be an open bodybuilder. Well, that's not you know, unwise so. at, at if he's 30 already and doing it for yeah. a while. Yeah, because um, I think go ahead, Stu. Sorry. No, you, true. <laughs> I think like like you said, looking at him, like the, the same thing. First thing that came to my mind is this is a bodybuilder. You know, um, of course, hamstrings, but I, I'm not gonna repeat what you said. But when I look at his physique, 
it just from the front, the main the main thing is he just needs more muscle all around. Uh, you know, it 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 just seems like, you know, when I look at like when someone is, I don't know how long he's been training, but to compete at even the classic or bodybuilding level, I just think that he's just gonna need more muscle all around, especially from the legs, because if the legs start to fill out, he gets a little more quad sweep. Um, he would look a lot more uh balanced if you will, because he looks a little bit top heavy just, just right now, but he just needs more muscle all around. You know, um, I would just keep working on everything. I won't even focus on weak body parts at this point. You just need more yeah. overall. You know, I, I agree. I agree with that. That's exactly what I was seeing from the get go. Um, but another 15, 20 pounds on him. He'll be, he'll yeah. Be all right. And if, so, if that was his conditioning at the, that Arizona show, was he planning on doing another show after that? Yeah, he wound up doing the USA's after that and uh, didn't go the way he wanted. So okay. I think condition's always been his problem, too. I think he just doesn't get as hard as he needs to. And Does so, he kill himself to get in shape, or is it just he's not pushing hard? Like, I think it's been like a – he's had a couple different coaches in the past, and, you know, his last prep, he kind of – he left his coach midway through because he didn't like the approach. And then I don't think – I it's kind of – I think he needs to get some good guidance, sit with that guidance. Like just take a uh, take a season and get peeled as fuck, and then see where he sits when he's actually really peeled, and then yeah. go from there. Because that might not might be another five seven pounds. Yeah. And then if he's got that much more room to grow to fit in the class, et cetera, like you know, ten pounds on him would look very impressive. So yeah. so you guys uh, you guys already pretty much covered all of it. I, I completely agree with everything you said. Um, what I'm going to add is that um, I feel like a lot of people think, not Lewis in particular, I don't I don't know if he thinks this or not, but I think generally a lot of people think classic is easier, right? Now, it depends what that means to you. I think if one of us say, say, uh, say, uh, says that, we mean it as, as that it doesn't take as long to fill out your frame for classic as uh, would with bodybuilding and you don't have to push yourself as hard with the food, right? In that sense, you could say it's easier. Now, as far as being competitive, I would say it's actually harder because you have, you, you need every tool possible to be competitive, right? You can't change your genetics. So Bumstead is Bumstead because he's Bumstead. You can't, like uh, you can't outwork him and then beat him, right? Like Ramon can't say if I outwork him and do more cardio and eat my fish, I'm gonna beat him because he's losing based off of structure, right? It's a genetics C contest, exactly. Primarily, yeah. Basically, so when I uh, I can say it's easier at the realm of you don't have to push as hard, but I would say it's harder in the fact that if you don't have perfectly flawless genetics you have no chance of being a top classic guy. Whereas in bodybuilding, you can have maybe bottom barrel genetics as far as um, structure, maybe shape, aesthetics, and still beat everybody else. Branch beat Dexter, Branch beat Phil, Branch beat Kai. I mean, he beat everybody besides Jay in that Olympia, right? And he's actually beaten Jay before. He beat him as the amateur. You know, I don't know if there are way more. Pro. There are way more metrics in bodybuilding that you can max out if you don't have the genetic capability. Hey, exactly. Luis hasn't even maxed out the classic class. No, he hasn't. Oh, yeah. oh. It says in this caption here, he's like four weeks out here. This exactly. is not four weeks out conditioning. And so oh, he, he's, so he muscle. still needs, he needs a lot more conditioning, which if he, he, he'll have a lot more room to gain more size and stay in the division. Yeah. Now, we don't know what that's going to look like. It's going to look a lot better. But will that be enough to like turn pro? We're not going to know until we see it. Now, if it is, then great for him. But, you know, if it's not, then that, that's when he's going to have to go into open, right? He's going to have to go into open because the amount of improvements he needs to make, it might be more weight than he can actually make the classic, right? He's going to look better with more muscle. You can tell Absolutely. because his structure, his gaps. That's some people, you can you can look at some people and say, like, would Sean Clarita look better with more muscle or Bonac? No, they wouldn't. But this guy will absolutely look way better. I think he'll look really good with a lot more sweep, uh, more arms, <laughs> more more oh, back. Oh, okay, so, like, focus more on everything. The silhouette, let's say that. the silhouette yeah. muscles. Yeah. So like yeah. your quads, yeah. your lat flare, your arms. 
because you know you have like four poses in classic and a, a lot of those poses are determined by you know how good your silhouette is yeah exactly. classic classic you can judge 2d whereas bodybuilding you have to judge 3d you yeah. know so yeah. if you just focus on that silhouette he'd be good basically if he can keep his waist the same he kind of needs more of everything because uh, the most crucial is going to be the hams and, and quad sweep for sure. But because of his height, he can actually use more everywhere. Um, and if, then if he, had, if he had more muscle, the shape is there. So if he had more muscle, exactly. it would he would actually look crazy. It's the he only look, reason why crazy. right now we're even just saying these things is because when I look at his physique, there's just not a lot of muscle to it. Even at four weeks mm -hmm. out, as Stu said, you know, you mm -hmm. keep shredding this guy up, like there's gonna be nothing left, right? So Bro, yeah, you kind of he, he just needs more muscle. That's that's just some, what it is. Some people need more muscle for their aesthetics to, to to shine more, right? Like Keon looked great at classic. It's like wow, he has good genetics, but his genetics looks even more pronounced when he became 212. Because you're like, wow, everything's jumping and popping at you now, and his waist still looks just as small. So somebody like this, imagine being six two. And being like in your 240s, 250, uh, you know, that's going to look insane when his arms are filled out and his legs are filled out and hamstrings are filled out. He's going to pronounce that V taper and he's going to look insane. So I think the potential is there. There's a lot more work to be done. We also don't know how hard he's pushing it. If he's 30 and he's been going balls to the wall on prep and drugs and cardio, mm -hmm. then, then that, that might be like a harder battle. If he knows that he hasn't really been pushing it, like Sid said, he hasn't really been pushing it as far as the gear. If he hasn't really been pushing it as far as maybe, uh, you know, diet and training as well, then the sky's the limit. If he's been maxed out everything, then this is going to be like a slower process and it's going to be like a harder battle for him. So only he truly knows that. You know what I'm saying? Only he yeah. truly, truly knows that. So Framework. It's one of those things. Yeah, it's one of those things where you guys know in the off season you got to eat, eat, eat till you're un uncomfortable, and he mm -hmm. hasn't really done that. And then oh, the uh, yeah. supplements aspect too. If you if you don't hit those two aspects, you're not going to get the size you need. So, yeah, I was gonna say he's, he's six two. You said he as heavy as he's been at two fifty five. I mean, that's yeah, not yeah. very heavy for six two. You know. Yeah. Facts. Okay. We're gonna go in a completely different direction with this question, but uh. Uh, I just gotta ask it. Who's that? Everybody got girlfriends here. Yeah. Uh. -uh. No. But you, you guys are still down to answer these kind of questions. I'm sure they're, they're not gonna watch it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> who's that? <laughs> who's down to take down a roided out female competitor? <laughs> 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 hey, I mean, listen. Hey, I don't. Huh? What division? When it, hey, yeah. <laughs> when it comes down to me, right? One thing I learned is that when you start limiting limiting yourself or like putting labels or types, you just limit limit your happiness, right? Yeah. It, it, if it looks good to you, it looks good to you. So, like, yeah. you can say, oh, "I don't like tall girls." But then you run into the tall girl, and you're like, oh, fuck, huh? she looked good, you know? Don't say, oh, she's tall, so I'm not interested. Go for it, though. Same thing. You might, you might That's say, oh, coming I'm not from a tall guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you might say, oh, I'm not generally into buff girls. But you see a buff girl, and you're like, okay, this is, works for me, you know? So it, it depends. I mean, it's, it's person to person. I, I could see a buff girl and think, oh, I, I don't like how that looks. And I could see a buff girl and be like, oh, that looks good to me. So... I, I I wouldn't not do it because somebody is buff, and I wouldn't do it just because somebody is buff. But going to Gold's Venice, some of these buff girls look uh, look good. And to I, was, me I was I was gonna say too when you're a lot of times you see these girls on stage, you're not seeing them when they're in their off seasons. They, exactly. they look a lot better exactly. in off season. You know, I don't know yeah. how old that person is, but but you got to uh, look a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be a little more educated. <laughs> I would. I would pull up some pages, but I don't want to make anybody feel awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell yeah. you what. Listen, here's how I see it. If if a girl has a good physique, right, it mm -hmm. means that she has put a lot of effort into it, right? And 
I find that attractive. Like the ability to like dedicate yourself and focus on something and work hard towards something, I found very, very attractive. So like I use that as like an indicator of who you are as a person. Now, obviously, yeah. like, you know, I know that because I'm in this sport, right? And but I I don't know. That's how I see it. Yeah, that's yeah. why I said uh, that that person you gotta you gotta probably uh, I don't know how old they are who who asked that question, but you gotta get a little more educated on this subject because it's not it's not as black and white as you think it is. You know. Well, the the, the one who asked the question, he's in his early forties, but he he he's into it. I'm not gonna say his name, but but, he, but he's into it. Uh, <laughs> that's, why, <laughs> that's why he's asking the question. <laughs> I, I know exactly why he's asking. He wants to see who else is into it. You know, the like, who is who else is into it? <laughs> All right. Uh, it comes uh, down to the face too. I mean, if if she's boom. got still a very pretty like feminine face and the the juice hasn't done too much to it, then great, man. But you know, if if you're gonna wake up. To something that doesn't look like you know a girl, then that's not that's not as good. You know, what, you know what's funny? Sometimes when we see like a buff bodybuilder chick, right? Uh, without saying any names, but like we know some bodybuilder chicks that don't look too good, right? We we assume you know it's mostly the steroids contributing to it. But look at that same look at that same lady before steroids. She wasn't that good looking before steroids. She's just she's just not that good looking. You know, whereas when I see like, you know, there's a few bodybuilding girls that are fought. I'm like, wow, she's really, she's really cute, really buff, but really cute. And look at her. She, she's just cute. She's cute because she's cute. She's not cute or not cute because she's buff. She's literally just cute. So if you happen to be ugly and you get buff, you know, you're just an ugly buff person like Stu, you know. <laughs> I'm going to say page. <laughs> no, but you know, you know said, you're no I, I, I say both, say both. <laughs> yeah, so you could say the same for guys, right? You could say, well, if you're an ugly buff guy and you, you're just gonna be an ugly buff guy, it doesn't make you good looking because you're buff, right? But it's better so, to be ugly and buff than skinny and or ugly and skinny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think so. Kids, yeah, but... <laughs> I think so. Yeah, but. Are, are we into buff girls? Uh, uh, maybe more so than more so than the average guy. I would say so. I am. You know. Yeah. 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 Same. I, I've never I fully like over there. <laughs> <laughs> you look to the side. Real you, get, you catch me looking over there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've actually never fully fully tried it. But let me let me ask you this next question before I actually talk about that. <laughs> this this question is similar to, but it says, "Would you rather like you rather pick one? Would you rather take down bikini figure or wellness?" I was going to ask that question. <laughs> you asked me. Yeah. Like, I, I was yeah, I'll thing. say I'll say wellness, and then uh, wellness, then bikini, then figure. Actually, yeah, I yeah, think I'll, I'll yeah, yeah, wellness, wellness, bikini figure. But but I was gonna say I've never been with a bodybuilder, an actual bodybuilder in any way. But I, I've been with a physique girl. Not been with like 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 in a relationship, but been with a physique girl. Been baby with a smash a physique girl is what he's saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> f f So f physique figure. Uh bikini. Here's the thing about bikini, right? Girls, there's a lot of girls who are aspiring bikini competitors, but they never actually competed. So that 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 doesn't really count to me. Just because you like bikini girls and think you're going to compete one day doesn't make you a competitor. So, uh, yeah, physique, I wasn't that into it. I wasn't that into it. I got to be honest. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't all that. Uh, wellness. I've, I've, wellness here's, is, here's, you know, the I've, I've, here's the question. With these questions that are being asked. Are they off season or are they are they are they like, like that? that's 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 what I'm saying because to me they're, bro, they're all the same. They're all all season. All the same. It, 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 it all works for me. Every single yeah. one works for me. I, I, you can't really tell. Can you really tell the difference between a wellness and physique off season? I mean, if they hold the, if they have good legs, not really. I mean, well, but if they're bulky, they got a little bit of they got a little bit of fluff on them. You know what I mean? Little little yeah. bigger little bigger butt. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, I can't I can't see myself. I don't. I I've, I've been with girls. To have abs, you know what I mean? I don't I don't like the hard abs. Like yeah. when I rub when I rub in their stomach, I don't want to feel fucking ripples. You no, know what I mean? Do. Yeah. So I do. I didn't <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't like the back. 
like the physique because the physique girls they don't have like the the best ass but they have pretty good backs so her back was kind of like wide like that and then she didn't have like a good arch so it was kind of rounded and i'm like and i'm kind of like oh <laughs> bad sample. Bad sample. yeah you kind of see the, the fucking the veins going through the back these are these are like, huh. These are good handles. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so it was like uh, you're 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 kind of into it, but then you're kind of like, hmm, this is different. This is this is real different for me. So it, I, I I wasn't fully committed. I, I I didn't I couldn't get all the way into it. If I'm being honest, it was kind of like you know you got to try it though. Like you can't not try it. If the opportunity is there, you're gonna take it. But uh, it, it, it's not something I would probably look for again necessarily. I, I'm with but you then, on this one. I mean, I, I I'll be honest. I, I don't really care. Like yeah. I was still on this one. I I just feel can like she, can she cook? <laughs> <laughs> like why aren't we asking the, the real questions here? Like yeah. like this is just a you know I hate to be that but like for me like if it's we're talking off season right Com competition of course everyone is like you know yeah, shredded yeah, yeah. and whatnot so it's different but off season it's all the most, same most they all look everyone looks good i mean at that point That's you're true. looking at per personalities past the physical physical aspect you know what God i mean but off season, look at that oh. yeah <laughs> you know? okay so, so, I'm, I'm so about it. on on that topic what's the most if you had to pick one single most important thing what what's the most important thing for you when it comes to like like your girlfriend like if you're picking a girlfriend what comes before everything? Just one one aspect. It could be. You got to be physically attracted to the person first, right? I mean, before anything other than else. That, other than that, then I, I guess because yeah, that that, that kind of besides yeah, because because once you're physically attracted to the person, I think outside of that, it's it's uh, communication. How, yeah, just how you how vibe well you with the person. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, how you vibe mm -hmm. with a person? Like, like, can I can mm -hmm. I be in a room with you for eight hours and not feel like mm -hmm. I want to kill myself? You know what I mean? Like it's it's how you vibe with the person. I think that's the most mm -hmm. most important outside the physical aspect. That's, that's I think good. I think I think most <laughs> men we can let a lot of things slide, right? But when it comes to does she respect you as far as does she respect your leadership? If you're like, hey, we're going right, and she's like, nah, I'm going left. That can't work. She has to respect your your, your leadership as a man. No matter what, I don't know if it's gonna sound misogynistic or what, but but like I'm like I'm like be careful, buddy. <laughs> this, this is that red zone, zone bro. Dude, dude, he's he's right. you're, you're like go to that red zone, bro. <laughs> imagine that, like, it, it, like 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 imagine your girl can, can't can't follow your leadership. Anything you say is the opposite. Oh, we 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 going here. I'm gonna do this. Uh, uh I don't think so. I'm gonna go left. I'll see you later. Ima you know what I'm saying? Imagine she can't. That's, commu that's communication, though. That's what Paul. That's what Paul is also saying. Oh, I think it's, yeah. it's part of communicate because there's a way to say it, right? You can say, "Let's go left," and the person says, "I'm going right instead." Or you can say, "I think we should go right because here's mm -hmm. why I think this would make more sense." It, it's all yeah. about communication, you know. You know how people use the word like "who wears the pants," right? Yeah, I think that starts to make it sound like negative or derogatory but what it should okay if somebody breaks into the door right now and it's me and my girlfriend is she gonna be like yo yo i got it or is she gonna hide behind <laughs> you and, 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 and hope that you fucking save her life right so if that's the case you can't only follow my leader and respect my leadership when it's convenient for you you have to do it all the time you know what I'm saying? you have to respect that same leadership any every other time this doesn't mean she can't challenge you as a, let's say if something happens you lose your job and you're sulking and she's like hey let's go you gotta you gotta get it done you gotta get back on your feet that's challenging you to be a better man but that's not butting heads or going against your time it's one thing to try you can challenge your man to be better but i feel like nowadays a lot of times couples butt heads because a lot of women are trying to wear the pants and it just doesn't work in that dynamic because, because they're told to by like greater society. Mm -hmm. And I don't exactly. think that makes anybody happier for the most part. There's exceptions to so. every rule here. Right. But like, yeah, yeah, I think somebody needs to wear the pants. Usually it's the man. And yeah. uh, I mean, to, I, I, if you're in a relationship, I don't really think you should necessarily be equals, right. You should both respect each other, each other's opinions, mm -hmm. but like everyone that, both people have their own roles and they're distinct and different. They're both mm -hmm. important, but they're different. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. 
Yeah, if, if that's if what I, that's what I was that's what I was gonna say because I think I think you know like the example you put you put about you know someone breaks into your house, there are different roles in a relationship. You know, there are some points where you're gonna take precedence, right, as that decision maker, and there's some points in other things depending on what we're talking about that yeah, yeah. maybe I just have no clue. Right. It's, yeah, it's something yeah, that's yeah. perfectly like, I know, like if I'll give an example, like my relationship, for example, my, my girlfriend is very detail oriented. I'm the kind of person I make the plan. I look at the macro picture, the micro stuff in there. I don't really care. I just want to get to the destination. Right. So in things like that, if she wants, if she's going to, you know, make the plans of how we do this, 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 this on that specific item, that's fine with it. As long as yeah, we get yeah. to the destination, I'm good. You know? So it just that depends. Like if, like if someone would break into my house, I'd grab his legs. My girlfriend would grab his arms. <laughs> 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 yeah. Because uh, because the, the, the truth is women don't want equality. They want equity, right? They Because they, that basically, it, it, it's all situational. It depends what we're talking about. Like they want it to be fair. But equality isn't actually fair. You know what I'm saying? Being equal is actually fair because equal would mean if somebody breaks in the door, we're going to stand side by side and we're going to beat this intruder together. But we're not going to do that because that's not fair because physically I'm stronger, right? I, I can handle myself better. So the fair thing would be if I was to protect you. So it makes sense. Like you say, your girl is more detail uh, oriented. Everybody, every girl I've dated has been better with like, Organize, uh, organizing and planning and being more, you know, like men, we're not the best multitaskers. Whereas girls, okay, let me do this. I'll, I'll handle this. I'll get this apartment. Okay, uh, I'm going to go check out this apartment. Oh, I got the apartment. All I need to do is, you know, they can organize and get shit done. You know, that's why a lot of, a lot of those jobs, women do work because they're better at the detail-oriented things like that. So we all have our strengths. Let's stop trying to, let's stop trying to, um, override each other's strengths and do what we're bad at instead let's focus on what we're good at and be really good at it it's gonna balance out it's work for the last how much years the planet's been here i don't fucking know the last thousands of years it's already worked it's tried and true this new idea of this new world it hasn't been tried and true i can't say it's not gonna work i have i, I have it's my doubts working. that are, Dude, boom it's not working <laughs> Look at I, all I the unhappy people who are like just not in relationships and yeah. spiteful and mad about shit. 100%. Because they're trying to force themselves into some box that they don't fit into. It's not it's not tried and true. We already have all these thousands of years of proof that this dynamic works. If it didn't work, we wouldn't be here. We would have died out years ago. But we're alive because it's already worked. It's like bodybuilding, right? All these people trying to tell you that's not how you train, you should do this. But we already have 60 years of proof that it does work, that that chicken breast works, that fucking, uh, I don't know, rows work, pull downs work. We already know this. So you, you're going to tell me all of this is bullshit. Do it my way. Your way might work, but I don't have the 60 years of proof to make sure that it does work. So this new era thing, we we, we can't say it's going to work. We don't have the thousands of years of, of proof. We might fucking kill ourselves. We might wipe ourselves out. We don't fucking know. So. Maybe we should try sticking to what we know works. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Call call me old school, right? <laughs> call me old school. Call me old school too. Because <laughs> <laughs> cause the, the things are moving differently. And, and like Stu said, why are more people single? Why are more people unhappy? Because this we're clashing. We're clashing. Men and women, we can't even work together. We can't see eye to eye because one is trying to be the other. Huh? I think we should open like a uh, like a relationship podcast or something. I just got a lot to say. I just have to say, I just I just put it out. You, you, know? you know me. I, when it comes to like, I, I feel like I, I kind of always have a lot to say about everything. You know, like 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 my point of views. I, I always have like so much to say about topics. I don't even say the half of it because I feel like half of it pe people aren't really ready to hear hear most of it. You know what I'm saying? They, they're not gonna like everything. You know, but it's just it is what it is, man. You know, it doesn't have to sound nice or sound cute. But it's just it's just what it is. It, it's it's facts, right? Can you really argue it? You know. All right, let, let's go back to bodybuilding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> let me see if I got a good one. Has anybody ever tried mint? Yeah. yeah. Um. Is that the uh? Is that the like kind of like trend kind of compound? Kinda, it's like. 
it's really wet if you want to use that word like i yeah hey, I hey, um, I I started it. I tried it last year for the first time, and I I started way too high. I started like three hundred megs a week. You should run it at like a hundred to two hundred max. It's really really potent. But I put on like eight to ten pounds in about a week of just bloat, and I got super strong. I got super full, and then my nipples started hurting really bad. So mm. I lasted like three weeks on it, and then I dropped it. So it, you should probably get your glands cut out before you start running it in any significant dose. I mean, mm -hmm. personally, I'm really, I'm susceptible to like gyno, so I have to manage that shit. But like even like running more AIs and running Nolda decks on it, like it still wasn't working. And like, I didn't want to ramp up my like aromatase inhibitors to the point where it would stop it. Cause like, then you're just taking a lot of like aromadex, which is also isn't great for you. So, no, it's not. Uh, I mean, it, it's, uh, I think, uh, who was it? Elias, Elias McCall turned pro the North Americans. Uh -huh, um, yeah. he told me like, well, well before the North Americans, he was running in this off season. He really liked it. He felt good on it. Um, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. He told me, I didn't really know that. It. That might be the first time I I've heard somebody like it. Like yeah. most bodybuilders, I think they, they don't really like it too much. It's just like, there's a lot of water weight. And if you're prone to guy, know that it's a problem. Um, but I mean, if I if I eventually get my surgery done, which I probably will eventually, um, then yeah, it's a good compound. You don't have to run much of it; it works really good. Are you are you gonna just do like a preemptive surgery because you don't have kino right now? Well, I, it gets a little puffy when I'm like peak off season. My test is high, or if I run trust alone, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I if I if I just have the money to throw at it eventually, like. Like I'll probably just get it done. Go just to Mexico it, yeah. or something. Well, speaking of yeah. which, I got my passport finally. Oh, so congrats. Congrats. I'm going to Mexico now. Congratulations. <laughs> Did anybody else try Met before? I tried it for a couple of weeks. I don't like it either. I, I was doing it for uh like, uh what did you have me doing it for? Uh like a cruise. 50, like 50 milligrams a week. On a cruise, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it was actually originally developed as like a, a male birth control drug uh, because oh. it's super, super suppressive uh, to the point where, like, supposedly it was going to shut off your sperm production, but it didn't. It didn't work, so they canned it. Hmm. Um, Man, I gotta be honest, with you, I, I don't really even know what the fuck mint is. I gotta be honest. I was gonna say I don't know what it is either. <laughs> I thought you've done everything. <laughs> is, is, is this like a really potent? <laughs> I, I thought so too. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> like a really potent test, from my understanding. Yeah, well, it it's it it can serve as like a full hormone replacement drug. Like, you know what? He probably uh, my, has some sitting in his box. <laughs> boy, this this might this, this sounds this sounds completely made up. I, I I assure you, it's true. This guy from the gym, I believe, gave me mint in a needle. I, I, I shit you not. Like once you see, he like, yo, bro, I mean, you, just, you took it. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. I, 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 you I don't even actually, know what is in there. You just, you just gave me a needle and said it's meant. I didn't actually. It was fentanyl. I didn't actually. It was mentanol. I, I didn't actually take it. I, I didn't inject it because it was during prep, and this guy kept telling me about um this compound. I, I, I'm I'm nine, 90 percent sure he said meant. He like, yo, you gotta try. It. No, and I fe <laughs> he's like, yo, this is the best stuff ever. You got to try it. I'm like, oh, cool. Maybe after prep. He's like, no, try it in prep. You're going to feel great. You're going to look great. He's like, I'll, I'll bring you a sample. And I'm like, sure, I guess. I don't know. And then well, he comes into the gym. Costco or something. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, the, the guy legit comes in the gym with a needle in front of the gym. Just gives me a needle like this. Like, okay. And I take it. <laughs> I take it and I put it in my back. I'm pretty sure it's in that drawer right there. I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure. Shoot it on camera. I don't, Let's go. <laughs> I don't. It's just that it's kind of random. It's not that I don't trust him, but um. No, that's what, super suspicious, dude. That's, that's yeah. So I would never. I would. <laughs> but but also like 
what what am I gonna do? And also, like, where did that like did he you maybe did he use uh, one CC and just take it out and then come back and bring it to you know? I I don't know what the fuck he did. And <laughs> like, that could be a, a used needle. I, I don't fucking know. But but like my my, my whole thing is that um, what am I gonna do with it? Like, I'm gonna take it, feel it, and be like, oh, that feels great. And then go get some more. I, I, I don't know. I don't. I, That's I another don't have... thing. Like, like, yeah, you like, you're just gonna take one shot, and then you're supposed to know what how it feels. You know, like I don't get I don't. that. <laughs> to, to, to be honest, I, I'm I'm pretty simple. Like, I'm not scared of drugs in that kind of way. But I, I feel like if if things are working, I know what I have to be better at. I don't think I need like for me to get my pro card right. I don't think I need new drugs. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I need more drugs. I just think I got to continue working and getting better. I mean, so it's like, uh, I don't really like to, I don't, I have no desire to add new things or find some new cool coach. This, this is the new coach. Everybody's working with it. I, I, I think none of that is relevant. I think literally continue to improve how I've been, how, how, how I've been improving already. And continue to improve, and then hit my peak better, you know. And pr pr pretty simple. So, I, I just have no desire to to try a new drug. Yeah, the uh, it, it's hmm? the it got super popular years back when uh, Tony Huge was talking about yeah. it because he yeah, was like, "Oh, this stuff is amazing. It's like Tren and Deca together, and it doesn't have any <laughs> side effects." Like, okay, dude, yeah. Um, <laughs> and he like popularized it because he does a good job of doing that, and it's like. You know the 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 drug head side of bodybuilders, which I know you guys think I am, but like I'm not. <laughs> like mm -hmm. uh, they they get excited for new different shit. You know, like this sure. is gonna be the difference maker. You That's what I was going to these guys. You know. That's what I was gonna say. Like I I feel like with bodybuilding, there there we call the metrics of the domains, right? Like your food, your training, your your gear, whatever. I feel like the people that are always trying to explore those avenues that they think there's something new. You're missing the whole picture, man. That's just one portion of the whole picture of bodybuilding. You know, I feel like mm -hmm. the guys that really, really go into that zone, they're not maximizing everything else. And then they they say like, oh, I'm not making gains because I'm not taking what the pros are taking. Stu's hiding mm -hmm. his, his actual protocol from me. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not going to lie, though. Like, when I, when I was like 21... I definitely thought like guys were doing some secret shit that we didn't know about. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, of course you did. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, have you seen Phil, bro? There's no way Phil is just doing testing GH. Like, Phil, Phil got some shit that we don't got. Like, what is what is he doing? I'm like, you can't look like that just doing testing growth and, and EQ. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm fucking on to you. So people, you know, so people have been getting huge the same way for like two or three decades now. It is not complicated. For, it's for not easy. Yeah. It takes time, but like it's not complicated. It's also hard to admit when 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 a motherfucker is just that fucking good, and you just yeah. can't you just can't beat him. You know, it's a coping it's like, mechanism. Was, yeah, you're trying to like, oh, but he has, uh, yeah, yeah he yeah. he got it. It's always and then uh, people love to throw around genetics, and genetics is huge, but don't use it as a crutch. It just is. You're, you're not Phil Heath. Too bad, you know. You can't you can't discredit his hard work. Because of his genetics, right? Does he get there without the work ethic? No. You can have Lionel Bayeki. You can have great genetics and still not make it. So don't say, well, Phil is a gift. It was easy for him. Oh, hell no, nah, it wasn't easy for him. But he was he was, he was the best, you know. He was just still the best. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think Phil and Jay and Derek and uh, and Heidi are sitting around talking about, hey, you guys, uh, you guys tried mint before? They're not. <laughs> they they having those conversations. You know what I'm saying? Hottie don't even know what that is, bro. <laughs> no, no, he, he don't. <laughs> you know what's funny? I I remember Jay, uh, Jay talking about Chris Aceto, right? And he was like, "Yo, me and Chris didn't discuss drugs." And I remember when the first time I saw that, I was like, "Oh, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. This how can you and your coach not discuss drugs?" Until I started hearing about people who who've worked with Chris Aceto. And they'll be like, hey, Chris, what's my cycle? And Chris is like, oh, what do you got? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what do you got on you? You're like, I got some EQ. Okay. Uh, one CC three times a week. And they're like, what the fuck? Chris, Chris isn't, he's not that kind of coach. He only, he literally, he just like 
he had a good eye, basically, right? With, with all due respect, he had a great eye, but he's not the kind of coach that's writing out full cycles and detail and it's just not a style. And then Jay said, technically, Chris wasn't actually his coach. He was like his big brother. Like he, Jay would do his diet and then go, go, come to Chris and be like, what do you think I can do better? And he'll be like, oh, maybe add more sodium and maybe pull back a little bit. Of, you know what I'm saying? But Jay was kind of doing his own thing. So they didn't have that kind of coaching relationship where he would send check-ins and then Chris would write it from scratch, right? So I do believe Jay now that I don't think they actually discussed it. Jay was uh, Jay was just doing his own own cycles. He was just a lot of a lot of people do 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 their own cycles as well though, and have a coach for diet, you know. So it's kind of believable. All right, we going to switch gears again. Favorite cereal? Honey bunches of oats. Yeah, oh. easy. With strawberries. Cinnamon. Or no, just like the 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 clusters. Like the one with pecan is good, but like just the regular is good too. Yeah, that is actually pretty good. Is it pecan or pecan? Uh, it depends if you're bougie. Yeah, <laughs> depends where you live. Yeah. If you're in South Carolina, they're picky P-K-M. about that. What you said, Sid? If you're in South Carolina, they're picky about that. It depends where you. Oh live. no, I'm they're, sorry. They're all about the pecans. Pecans. What you said about your your cereal? I mean. Oh, cinnamon yeah, toast crunch all the way. Cinnamon co- toast crunch. My man, he he know he knows the good <laughs> stuff. I used to <laughs> fuck with that, but like, it, if you eat too much of it, it scars up the top of your mouth. It you know? does. It gets doesn't it get soggy super fast? Yeah, that's why you got to eat it fast. You got to eat it fast, bro. <laughs> just a little bit of milk, and then just you know, just just eat it fast, man. That's that's the best one out there. Um, it, it jacks up your CK though, so careful. <laughs> <laughs> but so oh, wait so so ken, ken and sid both got cinnamon toast crunch yeah really yeah. I, I didn't think that was going to be the cereal that would get two votes i, I didn't what's see yours that coming. What's so let's yours? go paul first i, I want to get a I, feel <laughs> cocoa Coco pebbles cocoa pebbles cocoa pebbles and then let, let it sit, let it sit in the milk so that way all the chocolate goes in the milk mm-hmm. and they drink yeah. that milk last like chocolate milk Bro, I, huh? I didn't expect these answers. Okay, let's go top two. But well, what's your second favorite, Paul? Uh, I really wasn't expecting these answers. Disappointed in us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a big cereal person. I mean, okay, okay. Do, do you guys got a second? What's your second? I got a second. Apple Jacks. Boom. I, I, I was Apple waiting Jacks to hear some shit like. <laughs> I, I was waiting to hear Apple Jacks. Frosted flakes, you know, like those kind of cereals is what I was thinking about going here. <laughs> How about Sid? Sid, you got a second? That must be a West African thing, the Apple Jacks. I don't know about all that. <laughs> I fucking love I, I love, I love Apple, Apple Jacks. Cinnamon, <laughs> no, cinnamon and I, cereal is just like, uh, it's just yeah, for me. No, yeah, I like that. Yeah, oh, man, you when I was a kid, my mom wouldn't let us eat cereal except for uh, uh, the Cheerios. But once I became an adult, those Oreo O's, that's good stuff. Mm. I don't have That's a number sad. two, man. Maybe like the generic brand Honey Bunches of Oats. I usually get that anyways because <laughs> I'm cheap. So. Same shit. Still, you got oh, problems, man. man. I, I ate I ate Wheaties <laughs> when I was a kid. Damn. Oh yeah. I gotta be honest. Stu's Stu's answers was kind of a little off. I, yeah. I, 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 I like those answers. Have you even tried it? Like, you don't know what you're missing. Honey bunches. Okay, honey bunches are good, but favorite. I don't know about that, Stu. I don't know and and that. then he said generic for, for the second one. <laughs> yeah, come on, bro. That, honestly, <laughs> generic's probably number one. I'd buy that. <laughs> hey, generic, generics are, are, are rough. Like, no no matter how broke we got, we never did generics, bro. We never I got generic hormones. cereal and generic growth hormone, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it goes. I think... Um, Pinched pennies. <laughs> I think I think one now as an adult as a kid I probably had Frosted Flakes first but as an adult I gotta go I think I'm gonna go Apple Jacks first and then second probably Frosted Flakes but I gotta be in a mood for Frosted Flakes it's really sugary and it's crunchy and shit so but those <laughs> top two top two gotta go Frosted Flakes nobody <laughs> likes Frosted Flakes y'all like Frosted Flakes I like the Tiger but... 
That's it. It's just, I mean, it's 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 good, but it's just like it's like when I think of cereal, it's like the vanilla version. You know what I mean? Kind of like, basic, yeah. basic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Serious, it, it, yeah. It's basically, well, they had cornflakes that everybody kept putting sugar in it, so they were like. Let's put sugar in it for you guys. You know, <laughs> keep it simple. <laughs> and it's just cornflakes with sugar, basically. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I didn't expect cinnamon toast crunch and um, cocoa pebbles. I didn't expect that, Paul. Cocoa pebbles. I, I got to try that, but I, I don't remember the last time I've tried cocoa pebbles. You know what? I even used the diametized, the cocoa pebble diametized uh, protein mm -hmm. too. Oh, That's yeah. The they got that? Yeah. yeah. They got that? Okay. I yeah. didn't even know. All right. Y'all want to do one more? Yeah, we've been on for a little bit. Let's do one more. Okay. Uh, what's the? Let's start with Stu on this one. What's the cra craziest or weirdest drug you've taken? It doesn't have to be bodybuilding drug. Hey, ballies, uh, <laughs> ballies, ballies. <laughs> yeah, probably that. <laughs> I did a little ecstasy last weekend for New Year's. It was a good time. Okay. Yeah. Anything else uh, in this, too? Uh, no, I haven't done any psychedelics. I haven't. I don't really smoke much. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like stimulants, man. Whether yeah, it's yeah. caffeine, fentanyl. Adderall. Not fentanyl. <laughs> I've, I've actually never done any painkillers, like not even prescribed. I'm sure I have nothing. I, I oh, really? just have no desire to, yeah. Uh, it's probably good you, thing, but... Oh yeah, yeah. Do you ever had um, what's the thing? Uh, you got tattoos, right? Yeah, I got one big one here. You've you've never done like a painkiller for tattoo? No. Well, no. I, I I brought a flask. I think I was like eighteen at the time. I brought a flask of whiskey with me, and I like slammed some of it in the bathroom before I started. But that's mm. it. <laughs> See something like like for tattoos, like when you smoke weed alone, it actually makes it worse, you know, because you get kind of like fixated on it, you know. Let's yeah, go again. Oh, my point, I, I, you, you have more to add, Stu? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> dude. All this, all see, yeah, I'm as basic as it gets, man. I've, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm a. Uh, I'm a good guy, you know what I mean. I'm not saying that, you know. I don't really explore this stuff, man. I gotta be honest, a bad guy. You know? man. <laughs> Guys no are fent pushing fent over here, you know, like all this shit. Like <laughs> you, uh, you don't, you don't smoke weed. You don't smoke weed at all, dude. Rarely, man. Rarely. Uh, oh, like, okay. like once, like I would say, like twice a year. You know, twice yeah. a year. But um, yeah. you know, for me, it's just basically the bodybuilding stuff. You know. Just yeah. you know your reg your regular your regular trend. You know I haven't done men's or anything. <laughs> just <laughs> just, a, just some basic stuff. You know a little the basic trend. stuff, bro. <laughs> 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 Yo, uh, Ronnie Coleman on Joe Rogan was the best shit ever. Yes, uh, D -ball. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like like Joe Rogan had to ask him that question. But let's be like, why would you ask Ronnie Coleman? Like, <laughs> what, what kind of question is that? Like, what are we What are we doing here? He's like, oh, you know, oh, no, this is test the ball. Very basic stuff. <laughs> nah, that, that that was funny. Um, you never, yeah. So, so uh, no weed, no nothing like that. Just Tyler just Jays. weed is weeds. Just weed is what I've done. I've never done mollies or any of that stuff. And I, I actually have no interest either. I'm just wanna... I'm just a very plain plain Jane, bro. That's, that's <laughs> it. I just want to <laughs> clarify. It. I haven't done ecstasy or anything like that in like three years since like last weekend. So this is not a habit for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> in your uh, uh, Ken, in, in your college days, you never did a little, you know, a little blow. Some of that, no. you know. <laughs> No, I, I actually never did. <laughs> oh, yeah? I actually okay. never did. I actually never yeah, okay. did. Just just weed. That was it. You know, just weed yeah, yeah. and like and like drinks. But even like I started, you know, really taking bodybuilding really, really seriously, like my second year of college. So even the whole party scene, bro, I kind of stopped. I didn't really yeah, yeah. party, you know, past like my freshman year of mm. college. Yeah. Yo, yo Ken, I, I noticed. Like by the end of the podcast, you start sweating a little bit. Your forehead starts sweating a little bit. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, hit. he's withdrawing. <laughs> you know what it is? Shit. I, I, 
<laughs> those I questions got him nervous. It happens every podcast. I, I notice it, but but before I comment, like somebody says something, I kind of lose my train of thought. But I always notice. I'm like, yo, Kenneth, Ken Forrest on the sweat. I have a light right above me here, so that I can. So so like the light is like hitting me. I like sit those. My my house is like brutal cold. So oh, like in this room, I have like, the heater is like on like on blast, bro. So by like, the end of the podcast, I'm just like sweating, dude. We're gonna send you a fan, okay? <laughs> oh, a little man. fan for your dad. Every, every episode, pay, but pay, pay attention. Every episode, you're gonna see by the by the end. See you now, yeah. He's shiny. <laughs> oh man, let's go. Uh, let's go, Paul. Oh fuck, That's the craziest. <laughs> I mean. Man, I've dabbled in a few things. I've dabbled in Coke. I've dabbled in Molly's. I even dabbled in meth for a little bit. Oh, damn. Yeah. What? I, I, yeah it was tough, what? tough growing up. I, I feel like this is this, this, I feel like this is a really bad question to ask, right? But like... <laughs> You're going to ask it anyway. <laughs> 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 where, where, which is like the, the, the best, but like but when you say the best, that means the worst, I guess, right? Like, w- which one did you feel like? Whoa, this is. I'm good. I'm. I, I'm feeling great all, right now. All day long, Molly's, bro. Molly's. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know what? Say, if I had to say I, that I, I that I love the drug, it'd be Molly's. Like, like low, low, key, low, low key. I'm kind of like uh, I'm somebody who likes to experience life, right? I want to be able to tell you this feels this way. This feels like this. This is great. This is not great. But I haven't been able to get myself to do some of the things that I kind of want to try. But what if I like that shit too much? That's 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 a problem, you know. That's that's the problem right there. That's the problem. So it's like, <laughs> like I'm always curious to ask, like, what does this feel like? Like, uh, Coke is all around me, you know what I'm saying? But I've never done Coke, you know what I'm saying? I'm surprised I've never done it because I I used to party. I used to party pretty hard, but I didn't feel like I needed the Coke to party. Because uh, I was hyped off of fucking, uh, I was on Red Bulls, I was on liquor. Yeah, but that's uh-huh. what, that's because you've never done coke before. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> I would when you're on Anadrol, Trend, Red Bull, and and Hennessy, you feel like, amped up already. Yeah, you you pretty yeah you pretty fucked up. I, I felt like the the coke would have took me over the top. I would have been. I already felt like a menace. Like I, I had a reputation like a menace. The last thing I needed was to add some more shit to that shit. You know what I'm saying? And I was, I, I was, I was young. I was barely, barely in my twenties. You know, that would have been all bad. You know, I probably, I probably would have loved it if I'm being honest. You got to know that, yourself. Like if if you think you're gonna be susceptible to something, don't even touch it. Like that's why I've never yeah. touched a painkiller. I have no interest and no need. You see, know? see with the pain, I, I, I have done painkillers. And I don't feel any kind of like, uh, or, yeah. what's the word? Any kind of like, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel like something that I can't fully understand how you could get addicted to it. Like you yeah. don't feel any withdrawal from it. Yeah. I don't feel like, yo, I, I can't wait to do this again. Now, Have you if, done it recreationally or like for medical purposes? I, really? Only just for uh, my tattoos, bro. Oh. But if I'm being honest, I don't need it for the tattoos. Like, Hardly anything, then, right? Yeah. Me, yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I didn't really when I when I when I didn't really know the the recommended doses, um. But I think it was it was a Norco what, four. What did it come? Did you guys want to know? Norco's come forty. What does Norco come? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't know. The 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 first time I didn't. <laughs> granted, the, the guy I'm getting it from, right? A good friend of mine, but. He had a high tolerance, so maybe you should take it with a grain of salt. He said, "Oh, you could do like two, three. I said, "Yeah." I said, "Boom!" I popped three, and I threw up, you know, because uh, I wasn't oh, ready shit. for that. And yeah, so it, it hit me. I was like, "Whoa, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good." But you, you don't even know it when it hits you because I thought I was fine, and then I'm getting this tattoo, and I'm like, I'm talking a lot more than usual. I'm feeling kind of loopy a little bit, you know, or whatnot, but. I ended up throwing up, so that was that was way too much. But um, yeah, the, the the point I'm making is that I I can't see how you could want to, you don't you don't do it and be like, oh, I can't wait to feel that again. It's not it was it was never that kind of feeling. I think you if know? you're probably like depressed or like you have like 
like you're not in a good headspace and for you sure. know, that takes that feeling away for you, it's going to be for a lot sure. more appealing, which is why people turn to that when they're feeling that way, you know? 110%. A anytime I've done like, whether it's liquor or weed or anything like that, in a bad headspace, it creates that, it creates a bad pattern. Because now every time you're in a bad headspace, you want to go do it, right? Yeah, it's Instead of that's the issue. If you're doing it to have fun, that's different. So if it's like I want to have fun, I'm drinking a little bit, you don't get in a bad, you don't you don't build bad patterns. It's just like I'm just having fun. Unless well, you're I mean, you could still yeah, you could still build a yeah. party habit, but sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was but I was I, just gonna say, I was just gonna say, especially with what we what we do now, it's kind of just like, man, just there's no point. Like, I don't, I don't, if you do it, like, say like, you know, you probably, you, you go to a party like once every, you know, six months or whatever. Cool. But like, there's no business with that stuff, especially when you're doing serious yeah. bodybuilding. You I'm, know what I'm, I mean? I'm worried about like with Molly, cause it is an amphetamine, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, obviously my heart is under more strain than the average person. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm worried about. And getting fentanyl in my, in your drugs like no all jokes aside yeah. like that is scary yeah. as hell that's why yeah, people yeah. die you know it's you see all these teenagers dying from fentanyl poisoning it's like it's not because they're going and smoking fentanyl it's because like they wanted to take perks or something and had fentanyl in it or uh, yeah. and it had fentanyl in it. It's, yeah, that, it's all poisoning that's not good you guys all had a party phase at one point or not really i did i did yeah Four yeah, months in college, it. yeah. So you, know, you want to exp explore? You want to tell us a little bit more? Shit? <laughs> you, you know, you know, you know my problems, man. I got the baby mama drama. I got a free. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but you know, like um, with parties, I would say like uh, college. That that was it. Like I said, freshman year. I'd say like freshman year. Obviously, you know, you're out of the house. You're like, oh, you know, I'm on campus. Like, you know, partying all the time on College Ave over here by Rutgers, but. You get it out of your system. I say, like, if you're gonna do it, do it early, so that you don't have to start doing it when you're in your like 20s or late 20s. You know, mm -hmm. you want to do that stuff when you're still younger. Because yeah. I don't know about you, but like when I see like a grown ass man, like you know, 32, 33, oh, okay. they're out at the nightclub every week. I'm like, bro, you've got you've got yeah. some serious priority issues. You know what I mean? So, it's <laughs> so sad. Get it out early. It's so yeah, sad. get it out early. <laughs> Guys and girls a, a couple years doing. back, I think a guy died at the Olympia because he took some one of the a coach. He took some Molly and he was doing the after party thing, and he 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 died. You know, so yeah. it's not like people who are in this high, like you can have one vice right, and you can do fine with it. But if you're, and bodybuildings are vice right. But if you stack bodybuilding with you know drugs, you stack bodybuilding with fast food or whatever, that's going to cut your life stand down pretty quickly. You know, yeah, you can't do multiple vices. I think I think we're all allowed one one vice in this lifetime. You know, you you'll see some of these rock stars performing in their eighties, right? You're like, how the how the hell did this motherfucker live until his eighties? You know, but you know his vice was partying, but yeah. that's all he that's all he did, and he was able to live a long life. You know, so you almost got to pick your poison. Don't say I want to do this and do that. You know, don't don't you can't do everything. Your body can't withstand that. Our bodies are pretty durable. I think it can bounce back from a lot, but don't don't test it. Don't test it too hard. You don't want to do fucking mint with fentanyl. <laughs> and fucking, you know, you don't want fentanyl. To, you know, we got fentanyl. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do fentanyl. I think uh, let's do one more. I think one more is good. Yep. <laughs> people people actually get like when when we go too long. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be too long. People prefer it when it's too long. Like people got excited, like, oh, this is almost three hours. Great. I'm like, oh, that's, 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 a good three, that's three hours of cargo for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's the same for me. When I listen to podcasts, when it goes long, I'm like, perfect. I'm, I'm in traffic all day. Great. Let's, you know, let's hear this podcast, you know. If I'm just if I'm listening to a podcast, I'm in cardio, I got like 45 minutes, and there's still like 30 minutes of that podcast left. I'll go and watch yeah. the next cardio session. Yeah, yeah. Finish that's it off, cool. you know. All right. What are some next? Yeah, let, let's let's end with a. I guess it's kind of like an X, X and O question. What are some nagging injuries you have, and how do you work around them? Well, Paul, Paul has one right now. 
So I got, I got all kinds of neck injuries. I got shoulders. The shoulder I just fucked up. Knee injuries from playing ball. But um, work around them, bro. Just man it up, man it up, and just work, you know, work around them. Five star teams that work with you. Just do it, pussy. That was the answer I, I was hoping he, he wasn't going to give. <laughs> I mean, yeah, do that shit anyways. Yeah, I've been doing this shit for years, you know. That's what Joe says, too. Joe, Joe says the same. Ah, just, just, just get that shit done anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, yeah, to, to some extent, you, you can't just stop every time you get, you feel pain. But, like, like well, I guess Paul is doing it. He's, like, working around the shoulder. Don't don't load up the, the shoulder press and do four plates. You know, when you, <laughs> but, yeah, you got you to gotta work around it. Let, let's go, Sid. Yeah, I think just a, a real good warm-up is the first thing. I know when I was younger, I didn't even know what warming up was. But now, you know, I get in there on the upper body days. I'll do the cuff work. I'll do, you know, a, a different, like a lateral, a, la, a lat pull down and a pull over and like a face pull, like tricep, just to get all the blood in the muscles. And then, then I'll start getting moving. And, you know, when, when it comes to leg training, I've got whatever, couple, like some sore patellar tendons, right? And so I don't just hop into squats. I'll start with, you know, a leg curl to get blood in there. Then I'll do the leg extensions and I'll do you know, maybe some walking lunges and then I'll start moving, moving the heavier weights. So I think it just comes down to kind of maybe if you have a nagging injury, you'll want to do a full warm up and then choosing your, your extra, the order of your exercises to where the ones that are more often causing you pain, you might put that towards the end of the workout where they're not going to be as heavy or in a rep range where you're likely to like have that, that type of pain. Yeah, so that, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Hey Sid, are, are you, are you, are you like in a cocoon of saran wrap for for for, for the reason? some reason? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I thought, oh, it I, might I, just be the the, the light shining through my my blinds. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> I, I thought I saw like saran wrap around you or something. I'm bugging. Oh. I'm a bubble boy. No. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> let's go. Uh, let's go, Ken. Um, for me, I, I have like, uh, just like a nagging, I guess, tendonitis in my left elbow. Um, so, so like everyone said, pretty much just warm up. And then I use, I use like elbow sleeves, you know, like an elbow cuff. So I use it for both. Now the right is fine, but I feel like I messed up my left from just heavy skull crushers for years. Oh. Of just doing that just like ruined my, yeah. So I try to protect this one too. So, um, I just wear sleeves where I can. And then the only other thing I'm pretty fresh outside of that. The only other thing is just, uh, my, so my, I, I don't know if it's my right trap, but every time I get deep tissue work in there, like, man, like my neck is just like messed up for like four days straight, you know? Um, and you know, Sid, you know, this, when I, when I do my posing, I'm kind of lopsided a little bit on one side. So we've been trying to like work on that, but, in terms of pain, I don't really have any pain from there. It's just the left elbow uh, that I have right now. How how, how old are you, Ken? I'm 30, uh, 30, 30, turning 31 this year. Yeah, oh, I thought, I, second. I, I thought Ken I was, I, I thought Ken was, wait, like I was born, wait, no, dude, no, well, I, yeah, wait, yeah. I was born, I was born 92. So how old am Me I? Too. I'm born 92 yeah, so as well. Yeah, so 30 31. 30 or 31. 31. 31. 31. I forget yeah. sometimes, bro. I honestly forget sometimes. To yeah. be honest, I, like I'm probably gonna just say 30 until I'm like yeah. 35. <laughs> yeah, like I forget. <laughs> I forget. How are you gonna be 31 this upcoming year if you were born in 92? No, no that's what you were saying. I corrected. Corrected. No, corrected. 30, 31 now. 30. 31. <laughs> yeah, I was born in 92. Yeah. Because I forget. I forget sometimes myself. You know? Yeah. But if anybody has, we're all we're all just thirty. Just yeah, 30, yeah, just 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 thirty. <laughs> just just stop it at thirty and then thirty five. You know what I mean? <laughs> go from there. All right, uh, let's go, Stu. You know, I think at a certain point, just everything starts kind of hurting a little bit. I have a little elbow pain, but like like Sid like Sid was saying, like you put like shit that hurts later in your session, so like. I don't do skull crushers or like overhead tricep extensions like that until like the end and I'll work in a higher rep range than I used to. Um, 
the thing that's dogging me right now is my left knee and I've just been like slowing my reps down using a reverse band. Uh, I know, sorry. Um, and, <laughs> and doing my hack squats really carefully uh, to kind of like, it, it's, it's kind of like, it's like a race. Like if you can recover X amount from like one leg day to the next leg day a week later, but if you're doing so much damage and, you know, causing so much pain on that leg day and it barely recovers by the time you try to get to hit legs again, you're never going to get better. So like with what I'm doing now, I think it's getting a little better each week because I'm not doing as much damage each leg mm -hmm. day. So it can like fix itself a little more and then it can fix itself a little more if that makes sense. So you're not just constantly redigging that. Yeah. Hole. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's dogging me and I can't train my legs quite like how I wanted to, to, but you know, I mean, they're not shriveling up, fortunately. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it should just I feel like eventually. It's just, it's just how exactly. it is. It is like, like the the way Paul said it. It's it still it still makes a lot of sense, right? Because I know people who say, "Oh yeah, I kind of tweak my calf a little bit, right?" And I won't see this person in the gym for a week, and I'm like. What about the rest of your body? Like, what you know what I'm saying? Like, you still have the rest of your body. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm actually a believer of this as well, right? Some people don't like this, but let's say uh, one of my clients was getting, like, chest chest pain, right? Well, not, not like, chest pain, like, heart. Like, an actual chest. Like, you know, like the... <laughs> and I was looking, like... I was like, chest pain? <laughs> <laughs> Last more gear. <laughs> yeah, he, he was getting chest pain, and I think it was like bicep, the shoulder, like like tendonitis or whatever was going on here. So he decided that uh, he's only going to train legs and nothing else, right? And what I told him is that this, okay, when you stop training uh, half of your body, a lot of things are going to change, right? Your body weight is going to change quite a bit. Your metabolism is going to change. I'm going to have to change your diet a little bit. And now when you feel better, you have more ground to cover. So now we have to gain back this 10 pounds and gain back strength everywhere and, and whatnot. So my my idea is that you want to be a better bodybuilder. You want to put yourself in a position where you have the least amount of ground to cover. So I would say still train your other side, right? His, his idea is that, well, I don't want this side to outdo the other side. My thing is that I'd rather you only lose two, three pounds and be able to eat the same and be able to keep all this muscle and only have to worry about bringing up one side of your body when you feel better. It's still going to catch up. It's not going to, you know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to, you're not going to have one fucking big side and one small side. And then there's it's a lot been, of studies. It's been proven. You are going to say. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, yeah. It's been proven that it's the opposite. You're actually going to keep more sides than the other side by doing the other side. So I'd rather you be behind maybe one week, a couple of pounds. The food is the same. You start training, everything goes back to normal. Boom! By two, three weeks, you're back to normal. Whereas the other, the other way, we're gonna we're gonna need maybe two months to be able to catch up your entire upper body back to program. So I'd rather you do everything the same and only don't do the exact thing that you feel. So if it's your left bicep, left chest, try to do everything you can. Besides, you know, obviously maybe you can't fucking dumbbell press, you probably can't fly, but you can still do some shoulders, you can still do some light rows, keep doing that, you know what I'm saying? He ended up not doing it, uh, you know, but... <laughs> but, but I would still say, like, even, like, with me, when I get back in, my right shoulder's fucked up, so even mm -hmm. if I go that, that route like you're talking about, I mean, you still want to do, you know, five pound that oranges or whatever with the other one, because Something. it's uh, active, active therapy, you know what I mean? Getting the blood yeah. in there to heal it. Yeah, smooth blood circulation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole point is we're not saying continue to just completely ignore it and train the same. But like Stu said, there's ways you can work around it, right? He's using that damn uh, reverse band bullshit. You could do... Uh... <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> or, or... <laughs> or, or He's just, also like, here. <laughs> like Paul said, just you know we can't see you, Stu. We can hear you though. Yeah, my camera just battery just uh just said. Oh no, no worries. We don't we don't really want to see you anyways. That's okay. <laughs> and then uh you can go lighter, you can there's so many things you can do before you before you not train it at all. 
and it can it can continue to improve every week as long as you're not damaging it too bad. Right. You know, but yeah, but for me to answer the question, I don't have a nagging injury, but like Stu said as well, everything kind of hurts sometimes. So uh, sometimes my knees are hurt. Sometimes my right elbow will hurt. Sometimes my left shoulder will hurt. And then I just train accordingly. My left elbow hurts. I'm, I'm probably not going to do close grip, heavy close grip bench and heavy score questions, you know. Thank probably you. just going to do some cable uh, cable rope extensions, nice and slow. Not, not you know, not super heavy, something like that. And then if my shoulder hurts, I'm not going to do heavy, you know, heavy dumbbell presses. I'm going to start rear delts, which I wish I'd do this anyways, even if my shoulders feel good. I'll start with rear delts, do side delts before I do a pressing movement, and then maybe finish with another side delt and another rear delt. So I kind of stagger it rear, side, press, uh, side, rear. And my shoulders feel great. So, uh, yeah, so b basically find ways to work around it without creating more damage, but without losing the gains also. Because if you're just going to be scared to train every time you, you know, every time you feel some pain, you're, you're never probably gonna not going to. Like, yeah. you, you yeah. just never train the first time. You're, you're going to get lower fast. You're literally never going to be able to train because at some point you're gonna feel you're gonna feel some pain here and there. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's do one more, one more. What do you guys think? I, I don't want Ken to sweat too much. Go <laughs> 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 All right, last one. I, I promise, last one. We started at twelve. Well, one, yeah. because you were shitting. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see i'm just like in a, a disembodied voice right now <laughs> fucking shit in the background <laughs> uh hi coach i don't think i'm, I'm this person's coach but they call me a coach what what are some basic foundational supplements that all lifters should be taking Let's see. Right, I, I got to go pick up my son. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> this one's pretty easy. You guys can handle this one. <laughs> do your, do, right. yeah. do, do your hey, thing, Sid. Th thanks for having me on, man. It was a lot of fun talking to you fellas. All right. Thanks for coming on, Sid. Sid. Cool, brother. You. All right, Sid. All right, brother. <laughs> Later. <laughs> All right. Last one. Um, yeah, I just said, uh, what are the basic foundations? Let's limit it to three. What's the three most important supplements? Uh, for the front, for like a foundation, creatine, protein, and a multivitamin. Exactly what you, I exactly what Paul said. I was just gonna say that. So, but I was, I was thinking too, um, like a fish, fish oils, oils. Fish, fish oil, oil yeah, and multivitamin. Yeah, yeah, one of those yeah. turn into a big list pretty quick. Are we talking oh, yeah, like bodybuilding <laughs> supplements or like health supplements? <laughs> um, I guess they didn't say. He's natural, stupid guy's natural. <laughs> you know they test test no, no, I'm not talking about <laughs> drugs, dude. <laughs> uh, just okay, the basic so, stuff. Just your basic stuff, yeah. Um, so, yeah, bodybuilding supplements. I'd say uh, I don't consider protein a supplement. I think that's like food, personally. But that's just me. Um, if it was food, you would just call it food, Stu. Anyways. <laughs> um, Bodybuilding supplements, I think, uh, a in, like intro workout, so like a carb powder and EAAs, and then a pre workout on top of that. That's for bodybuilding stuff. For health stuff, multivitamin, um, uh, multivitamin, uh, fish oil, and uh, I don't know. Number three. Oh yes, Stu is right. Let, let's separate because health and performance are two different things, right? Because multivitamin would be health, and the protein would probably creatine be more performance. Okay, L let's say performance then first. Let's go, uh, Paul. Performance. Okay, then I would have to go. Is this actually does that include protein? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so, right? Okay. I think so. Yeah, performance, recovery. Not yeah. about this. Or is that food? <laughs> yeah, yeah well, Stu, Stu said that's food. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say performance. I would still stay with creatine. Mm -hmm. um, definitely an EAA, car powder, and probably a pre workout. Okay, so you said, 
Wait. Real team? An EAA, team. like a car powder, like EAA car powder, like mixture or whatever. Yeah. And uh, and uh, a pre workout. So, so, no protein. It's food. Protein Bro, is food. protein is food. So. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, yeah, fuck it. Let, protein is food. Yeah. Let's go with, Pro- let's Pro- go with Pro- that. I mean, protein is protein. Yeah. Yeah. Because, okay, I will say we use it like food. We don't use yeah. it like we're going to supplement protein. We're like, this is meal. Meal four, post workout yeah. shake, you know. Uh, and then health, okay. Then, then let's go health. You said multivitamin, fish oil. And then health, I go multivitamin, fish oil, and uh, what do I have up there. You got like like twenty different health supplements there. I got all kinds of shit. <laughs> uh, Which one do we say? T- Thomas Martin. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's don't, 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 those are the more the most important. Yeah, those too. are the most yeah four. Because yeah. from there you could say I could say anything from vitamin C to cranberry to milk thistle. At that point, it's like just choose your third one. You know, uh, how about uh, how about Ken for the let's go uh, let's go health first. Health okay, first. I'll start with just overall because based on the original question, I don't think this person is as going as specific as we are. So I would still yeah, stand yeah. with my original answer, whey For protein, sure, yeah. cre- creatine, and multivitamin, right? So, but yeah, if yeah. we're going health, um, I would say definitely for health, uh, your fish oils, your multivitamins. And um, I mean, it just depends on, you know, what you're doing at this point. But honestly, you can probably, you can probably throw in if you want, like, you know, like I guess shark cartilage, some people use that or, Wait, Whatever, what? but I think you, you just need to cartilage. Tumeric, yeah. I'm about tumeric for for anti-inflammatory. Wait, who, turmeric? Who, yeah, who, turmeric. The hell, who, who the hell uses shark cartilage? We're not going to skip over never that. Never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the secret shit. That the see? pros don't talk. <laughs> yeah, you see, this is this is that Phil Heath shit that we don't we didn't know about. Man, I, I've never, never heard about this. It? You never heard about it? It's a <laughs> supplement. Some some people use that for I'm like. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. It's almost what like it's you... almost like it's almost like collagen, right? Like just like a oh. it's almost like a collagen supplement. But I don't think it's that um vital, you know. I just think multivitamins and fish oils is still is still number one. If I'm throwing out a third, I'm just throwing something out of left field, guys. Can um, can we're, can we're for multi shark cartilage? That's gonna say deer out of their neck. I, I, yo, I, 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 th- I thought you were gonna say cranberry or something. Man. Cranberry <laughs> pills. You said shark. shark man, that's that's wild. That's just sounds expensive. Holy shit! No, nah, it's not. It's not. You can you can get it at any store, man. It's 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 Bro, pretty cheap, man. I, I'm, I'm only talking Emma. cheap stuff. How many sharks do they have to hey. kill to get a bottle of shark cartilage? Listen, I don't know, if, bro. If, if this is what if this is what Ken is using, I'm I'm going on Amazon today. I've, I'm I've used it before. That I don't, I don't use it secret anymore. Shit. I've used it before. <laughs> you see, that's the real secret. The, the Nigerians all taking shark shark cartilage. <laughs> I've used it before. I don't. I'm not using it right now. But um, if we're if we're talking performance. Um, honestly, I don't even use pre-workout. So caffeine is number one, whatever supplement you want to put caffeine in there, or you just want to go straight coffee. I just mm-hmm. use straight coffee that works. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course, like, like, you know, everyone else said, if we're talking performance, I think creatine is still tried and true. Um, so yeah, I say, honestly, I got two, man, two for each. That's four. Yeah. So that person, if they need they need a selection, you got four four things to choose from. But dude, there's no shark cartilage listed on Amazon. It's all like all these other he, he like, gets it from the, the, the ni- Nigerian shop. No, nah, it's the uh, you know, like uh, they used to they used to sell it before. It's like um, I don't know if they're putting. This is like real old though. This is not. Yeah, like, I, remember, I, remember, I remember reading about that shit like ten years ago. Yeah, this is like real old. I'm not talking about recently. This is something like like. Back in like freshman year of college, that it I appears tried. to oh. just not be listed on Amazon, so it is kept not, a secret to some extent. It must they're not be selling it, it anymore. It, it must it, work. It's not, not on Amazon. It looks like it's on other places. But listen, once huh. Amazon gets rid of it, that means that shit is good. That shit yeah. works. <laughs> they did that with NAC too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of people, so, some places used to sell it. It's not like, uh, but it's it's almost like basically. I think oh. before collagen was like. A main thing. I think that was like what people were, you know, why, they were why, saying was the big thing. Why the I shark? Or, or why? Why not like 
salmon, so cool. salmon cartilage. Bro, you're, you're asking the wrong guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Like, how did we both react to shark cartilage? Like, like that yeah. sounds cool as fuck. Like, that, sounds, yeah. that, that, sounds, that sounds cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think I think sharks have the the highest test level than than any any uh any animal, right? Yeah. True. It's like uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> People used to like inject like bull shark testosterone or some shit. Hey, <laughs> I feel like I've heard of that before. <laughs> yeah, so their, their cartilage is gonna be it's gonna be different. It's gonna be something special. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. Uh, uh, Stuart, are, are are we gonna see you again, or are we gonna go? No, with this? I I put my camera away. Uh, we're okay. almost done though. So <laughs> yeah, so let's go. Um, yeah, uh, so let's go health health supplements and then health H uh, E L F. Health. 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 <laughs> health. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, health. Health. I don't know. I don't know if they health, but I would say supplements. And then we go performance. Me? Yeah, Stu. I, already, I thought I already did. Uh, oh, yeah, so. Went. Yeah, oh, intro okay. workout. So, like, create or um, fucking. Like what was it EAAs and a card powder? That's two, and probably creatine. I like pre workouts personally, but um, yeah, creatine. Okay, can't miss that. All right, so uh, you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of pre workouts have creatine in them too, though. Yeah, and creatine what actually? Contain what? Oh, cre- oh, creatine. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of pre workouts contain creatine already. They usually put like a smaller amount, I think, right? Yeah, five grams. All right. Let me go. Uh, let me go. Health supplements, uh, multivitamin, fish oil. Uh, third one. Let me say. Uh, let me say NAC. Let me, let me say NAC just because it has a lot of overall benefits, immune system, and uh, antioxidants. Whatever the fuck that that means. But yeah, NAC or turmeric like, are both really good. They're like both yeah. antioxidants, anti-inflammatory. Uh, yeah, let, let, let's say next since Amazon wanted to ban it during COVID, it yeah. must work, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, now performance creatine. I gotta be honest, I've been taking creatine so long, I don't even know what the fuck it's doing, but I'm gonna keep taking it. Better than um, him, bro. <laughs> so, creatine, um, no protein, right? That's the, that's the food. I don't really take a lot of performance supplements, man. I don't. I don't do pre workout unless it's like a leg day and I'm feeling drained. But I don't do pre workout. I do. I, I like the pump pre workout. So let let me say uh, glycerol. Let me say pump pre workout. So the glycerol, the arginine, the beta alanine, you know that kind of shit. A non stem. So, yeah, non stem. Yeah, non stem pre. I think that can be <laughs> even more useful. You you don't need to be that cranked up to train, especially you got you know my knees hurt, my elbows hurt. I don't really want to be that hyped up when I train. It's not gonna help me. So uh, yeah, pre non stem pre creatine. Um, I don't fucking know. I guess I don't really use performance. What else? Do, what do you guys say? What else you said? <laughs> We're all saying the same stuff. Yeah. You know? yeah. Caffeine or creatine, bro? Like, uh, <laughs> some, yeah. Oh, blood. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so th- that's that it, goal. I guess. Yeah, that's it. Like, uh, throw throw D ball in there, and you're good to go. Or meant <laughs> basic stuff. Yeah, just basic stuff. <laughs> uh, all right, gentlemen, time to go eat. All right, I'm going hypo. All right, Ken. All right, uh, try to try to cool down a little bit, Ken. I'll see you next time. <laughs> I'll see you guys. See you guys. <laughs>